This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Montreal Expos faced the Pittsburgh Pirates at Three Rivers Stadium for opening day on Friday, April 6th, 1979. Montreal was managed by Dick Williams in his third season with the club. The Expos had been a below-average team for years, never finishing higher than fourth place in the NL East every year since their expansion season in 1969. The team had some hope, however, as they watched the rise of their three young homegrown sluggers, Gary Carter, Andre Dawson, and Larry Parrish. Pittsburgh entered 1979 under third-year manager Chuck Tanner. The Pirates were a powerhouse in the 1970s, but had trouble finishing it off. They won the World Series in 1971, but had four NLCS exits in the early 1970s, along with three consecutive second-place finishes in the years leading up to 1979. This audio recording is from the Pittsburgh Radio Broadcast, featuring announcers Milo Hamilton and Lanny Frateri. This is Milo Hamilton with Pirate Warm-Up, just minutes away now from the opening pitch. Pirate Warm-Up is brought to you in part by Joe Ziskin, the Tri-State's quality home improvement expert, who reminds you, before you do anything in home improvement, do nothing till you talk to Joe. Pirate warm-up time on opening day. Hello again, everybody. This is Milo Hamilton greeting you from beautiful Three Rivers. The sun is out bright, and that means it's baseball time. Weather might not feel like it all together, but you get here, the players are ready to go. And after this great spring training this ball club has had, and thinking all winter over how close it was last September and October, they are ready to put it in here for a year and give you fans a real treat for a full season. Bert Bryleven celebrates a birthday today. Makes me feel a little older. Chuck will probably kid me about it. I was married 27 years ago today, and he was born 27 years ago today. How about that? So we're celebrating and hoping in about three hours that we're that much happier 1-0 against these Expos. It'll be Bert Blylevin hoping to celebrate that birthday in a big way. And Steve Rogers, a very fine right-hander, will be going for the Montreal Expos. As always, on opening day, the skipper of the Bucks, Chuck Tanner, will be our guest. We'll be talking with the Newcastle Flash right after this message. Calling Dr. Ziskin. When you need a doctor at your house, you know who to call. When you need a doctor for your house, then call Dr. Ziskin, the Tri-State's leading house doctor at 421-7866. Joe Ziskin is the man who can doctor an ailing house, cure it for a leaking roof, or mend that dull, drab look on the outside. Dr. Ziskin specializes in and will prescribe Ambassador Solid Vinyl Siding, the designer's choice for distinctive homes. Ambassador siding is thick and flexible, plus dense, stain, and scratch resistant. Yes, Dr. Ziskin can cure drabitis. So let Joe Ziskin, home improvement specialist, diagnose your house troubles by making a house call and giving you a free estimate. Every job is guaranteed in writing. That's why no money you'll be risking when you call Joe Ziskin. So do nothing until you call Joe Ziskin at 421-7866. Out of town, call collect. That's Chuck Tanner, the last seven, time eight, I talked to you six. was right in your office as we're doing it here today. It was the day after we didn't do it against the Phillies. It kind of got to you that day because <laughs> it kind of hit you that day when you were doing the show. It was so close, and you've been preaching that all winter. Yeah, you're right. It just knocked the stuffings out of you, but you know what? We're starting again today, Milo, and the butterflies are back in the stomach again, getting ready for another exciting season, and... I'm looking forward to it with great anticipation and great expectations from the Pirates of 79. You know, I had Dale Bear on the other day from Florida, and he said, I am so happy to be with the club opening day. It's different to be called up. You can imagine how he feels today, don't you? I sure can. And uh, any rookie whose first year opening day, it has to be a thrill that they'll never forget. And we have a few of them with us that are going to go through that this afternoon. That's Ed Whitson, Steve Nicosia, and... Uh, Adele Barra. You remember your opening day. You set a record. Yeah, I really did. Never forget it. You know, uh, things happened and was able to hit a home run the first time up in the major leagues. So it's something I'll never forget. And it was a thrill that uh, nobody can ever take away from you. Chuck, you heard me in the opening remarks say we'd had a great spring. We have. This club is really ready. They're kind of busting at the seams to go here today, aren't they? Well, we're ready for the season, Milo, and I, I believe that uh, what we did in spring training, uh, 
to get them ready physically, to, re to get them ready mentally. Uh, we've covered every phase of the game. Uh, we have a good ball club, the best 25-man unit I ever managed. Uh, we're in a great uh, division, a tough division, competitive division. No easy, no easy games in our division. I don't think there's any easy games in the other division. I feel that uh, the National League is really tough, and uh, the thing we have to do is everybody in our ball club play up to their capabilities, not play beyond it. Just do what your abilities tell you you can do and contribute in your area, whatever your area is, to make our team good, and then we'll have a good year. Chuck, everybody knows that you're a manager who likes speed. Every club you've had has had it. You set a record, I think, in Oakland the year before you came here. The two years here, your clubs have stolen almost 500 bases. But another ingredient you like is a versatile bench. You might have the best bench you've ever had managing in the big league. No question about it. We do have that versatility, and we have power to come off the bench, and we have ball players that uh, have speed on the bench. So we have all areas covered. And this is no question uh, about it. This is the best bench uh, with the balance and versatility that, that the Pirates have had in a long, long time, I believe. Really give you some maneuverability room in tough ball games and late innings. Exactly right. Plus the fact that the players that uh, uh, are on the bench, see, I, I know that if a situation comes up where a player isn't able to play for a few days, I feel we won't lose a beat because of the talent we have on the bench. Don't you think, too, that after Labor Day, when you see some clubs will a little bit, that this will help you, too? These guys that, that you consider maybe your regular eight won't be going downhill, as you see sometimes. They will have been spelled by a Lacey or a Milner or whatever. Well, we don't plan on playing everybody 162 games. Uh, you know, the way the season and the travels and uh, different uh, times, the games are scheduled throughout the country. Uh, everybody has to have a, a break here and there. Uh, a ball player gets hurt when he gets tired. Uh, when the fatigue sets in, while well, hopefully we have the players that can give all our ball players a day off that's needed here and there. And uh, if we can do this, and I'm sure that we can, it's going to make us a better ball club uh, uh, throughout the long, hard season. This ball club uh, has the depth. It has the speed. It has... Uh, the defense that you worked on so much in the spring, that was one of your goals. And to work on those cutoffs and the base running, you lectured day after day on that. It really got in the time, and you saw it pay off in a couple of spring games that helped you win. Yeah, we really did, Milo, and you saw it yourself every day uh, the way we did go uh, at it. And You have to give the ball players a lot of credit the way they work. They, they have a purpose in mind, and I think that uh, they don't want to be disappointed like they were last year. Uh, everybody was heartbroken around here at the end of last season, knowing how close we came. And I believe that they have a purpose that uh, they don't want to be second anymore. We've been second two years here, and, and the last year Danny Murtaugh was here, and a lot of players were here when Danny was here. So uh, the purpose is uh, let's not watch the World Series on television. Let's get there ourselves. Well, the enthusiasm is there, and it rubs right off from the gentleman who's been our guest. Chuck, looking forward to spending another year with you, and I know it's going to be an exciting, interesting one, and when we all get together in October, we're going to have a lot of laughs. Well, that's the purpose, Milo, and uh, I know the fans, you come out and see your Pirates, and they are your Pirates, you'll see the best player in the game, you'll see great pitching, and you'll see great speed, and you'll enjoy yourselves, because not only have they turned things around at the stadium here uh, beside having a good ball club, they're going to create a lot of interest for the fans so the fans can really enjoy a day at the ballpark. And, and so that their children, uh, uh, no cheaper place to, uh, that you can go for entertaining your family and, and your friends or your guests or, wherever, or whoever is around this area. And you're going to have a lot of fun in the stands and we're going to have, give you a lot of fun on the field. So come on out here and see this ball club today and every time you can. Skip, good luck to you. Thanks, Milo. Chuck Tanner, skipper of the Bucks, the battle in Bucks, and they will be doing that all year long. We'll be back with a closing note right after this message. It's your way, it's my way, it's our way, the United Way, the United Way. 83 agencies, 170 services at 201 locations serving almost a half million people. That's the United Way. And contributions are our way of supporting the agencies and services of the United Way. Of giving aid to the handicapped, the aged, troubled youth, all those less fortunate than most of us. It's the United Way's responsibility to meet the human service needs of the community today as well as tomorrow. And it's our responsibility to help them meet those needs. This is Roy Fox. We at KDKA Radio urge you to support your United Way. And remember, 92 cents of every dollar you contribute goes directly into United Way services. And that's a fact. It's your way, it's my way, it's 
Chuck Tanner, for being our guest, will be going with Babs sometime during the season over to see Bernie Lister, the genial host of the Cork and Bottle. That's in the Oliver Building, Smithfield Street, downtown. Now here today, the Dutchman, Bert and trots out the new foliage, the beautiful new red beard. He'll be the bearded man from the north here today and take on Steve Rogers and the Expos. Hope you're on your way here. We're ready for the opener. Milo Hamilton thanking you for being with us. Hoping you'll stay tuned now for the ball game between the Bucks and the Pirates right here on the Pirate Baseball Network. Pirate. Pirate warm-up time has been brought to you in part by Joe Ziskin, the Tri-State's leading home improvement expert, who reminds you, before you do anything in home improvement, do nothing till you talk to Joe. And this is Milo Hamilton. You know, it's the start of a whole new season of baseball. Hot dogs, apple pie, and barrel Chevrolet. Even though it's early in the season, barrel Chevrolet is already batting a thousand during their Hello Spring Sale now going on. The reason is that barrel Chevrolet has acres of economy cars that other dealers wish they had. Barrel has plenty of gas-saving Chevette in stock and ready for immediate delivery at little profit prices that you just won't believe. Let barrel put you in the right car right now. Barrel Chevrolet, Route 19, Wexford. Your Net and Turf stores, specialists in the finest tennis, golf, and ski equipment around, welcome a new addition to their sport family. Now in stock, and not a bit too soon, water skis. Both Net and Turf locations carry EP's Heart Honeycomb, and for the best in family water skiing fun, Cypress Gardens. Net and Turf, the leaders in the tri-state area for skiing equipment, both summer and winter, now also bring you the latest in tennis equipment, like the Rosignal Tennis Racket. Net and Turf is one of the few sporting stores in the tri-state selected to carry this top-of-the-line racket. And right now, Net and Turf is offering a spring tennis tune-up special. They'll restring and regrip your existing racket for only $19.95. That's a Victor Gut and Victor Grip, only $19.95. Net and Turf, your tennis, golf, and now water ski specialist in two locations, the Washington Mall in Little Washington and the new Wheeling, West Virginia store. From 70 West, take exit 2A to Ogilvy Park. Net and turf. Hi, this is Jack Bogut. You know, every morning I get up and show up for work, I'm living proof that you can do it too. So join me tomorrow morning on KDKA Pittsburgh. Pirate! Pirate Baseball 79 is brought to you in part by Cons Wieners, the official hot dog of the Pittsburgh Pirates. By the Red Bull Inn. Visit any of the Red Bull's 13 convenient locations, and they bet you'll be back. And by your nearby Zenith quality dealer, who invites you to see Zenith System 3, the best Zenith color TV ever. Under bright, sunny skies, Three River Stadium, opening day, 1979. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. With Milo Hamilton, this is Lanny Frateri. Opening day festivities including the playing of the National Anthem. First of all, in honor of the Expos who are here today on opening day, O Canada. I can remember since I was about six years old, he'd always take the day off from school. Mom would write that special excuse. You'd find your way at a ballpark around the country. For me, it was Rochester, New York, and sure was the same for Milo in his days in Iowa. Well, here we are at Pittsburgh Three River Stadium, the opener of the 1979 baseball season for the Bucks and the afternoon. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. When you say Budweiser, you've said it all. 
buy daily juice products. Compare the flavor, the quality, and the price, and you'll buy daily. And by Chevrolet, inviting you to visit your Chevy dealers on April 19th and test drive the 1980 Chevy Citation. It's the first front-wheel drive with Chevy behind. Our broadcast authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Pittsburgh Pirates solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates is prohibited. Under the contractual arrangements of the Pirates for this broadcast, the announcements for this game have been selected by station KDKA, subject to the approval of the Pittsburgh Pirates baseball team. The umpires are at home plate, talking with the manager of the Bucks, Chuck Tanner, and the skipper of the Montreal Expos, Dick Williams. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First of all, for the Red, White, and Blue Expos, they'll have Andre Dawson leading off and playing center field. Rodney Scott has beaten out Dave Cash for the starting second base spot of the Expos. Rodney Scott will bat second and play second base. Warren Cromartie will be the Expo left fielder, and he'll be batting third. Ellis Valentine will bat from the cleanup spot. He'll be in right field. Tony Perez hitting number five will be at first base. Then it's Gary Carter, highly touted catcher of the Expos, batting sixth. Larry Parrish will be in at third base, batting seventh. Chris Spire will be the Montreal shortstop hitting eighth. And Steve Rogers, sinker ball right-hander, born in Jefferson City, Missouri. He'll be pitching for Montreal and batting in the number nine spot. The starting lineup for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Chuck Tanner has put the Pirates down in this sequence. It'll be Frank Tavares leading off and playing shortstop. Omar Moreno hitting in the number two spot will be in center field. Dave Parker will be batting third. He'll be in right field. Willie Sargio will hit from the number four spot and play first base. Bill Robinson, batting number five, will be in left field. Running Stennett hits six. He'll be at second base. Ed Ock doing the catching and batting in the number seven spot. Bill Garner will be at third base hitting eighth. And Burt Blylevin batting in the number nine spot and doing the pitching. Well, this afternoon, as the Pittsburgh Pirate Parrot unveiled to the crowd... He was welcomed to the National League by the Philly Fanatic. Philly Fanatic flown in especially for this opening day ceremony, and they're taking part in a battle head-to-head of dueling banjos. The Pittsburgh Pirate Parrot and the Philly Fanatic. The umpires for this afternoon's game, and one of the four umpires is a professional umpire. Dave Pallone will be behind the plate. He is from the International League. His contract has been purchased by the National League. So Dave Pallone will call balls and strikes. Joe Schrett, who is from Barrington, Rhode Island, will be at first base. Ron Hudson from Pittsburgh will be at second. And Joe Mibus from Dormont will be the third base umpire. Club at home in 1978. They were 55 and 26 at Three Rivers. And the Pirates' schedule would seem to help the ball club get off to a fast start, playing a large number of the games at home. Right now, the replay of last year's excitement. And uh, the crowd here at Three Rivers Stadium was once again reliving the excitement of that final weekend against the Philadelphia Phillies. Oh, what a great weekend it was. The big one-run victories over Philadelphia on the Friday night. And then on Saturday, uh, Stargell's grand slam in the first inning. We thought we were on our way, and this didn't work out. But oh, so close. Burt Weiland going to the mound, second year wearing the black and gold of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Where's the Pirates as they take the field today, first time in the club's history wearing their names on the back of their shirts. The mayor of Pittsburgh, Mayor Dick Caligiuri, is here to throw out the first pitch. He's doing that now, down to the pirate box, past the bucko dugout. We had mentioned that the governor, Dick Thornburg, had been scheduled to be here for the opening day and that the mayor would throw out the first ball on Sunday, but because of all the uh, concerns in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the governor is mine, quite obviously and appropriately, is on that concern at Three Mile Island, and so that's where the governor is at this moment, or he's working on things involving that. So the mayor of Pittsburgh here today to throw out the first pitch. Burke Y11, as he takes the mound, 14-game winner a year ago, 
136 lifetime victories. Came up initially with the Minnesota Twins and then a couple of seasons with the Texas Rangers. Throws a couple of different fastballs, one that rides, another that sinks. The big trump suit for Bly Levin, of course, is that curveball. He'll also throw a straight change. But when you really come down to it, for the Dutchman, Bert Bly Levin, control is the important thing. Young man who was, was graduated from Santiago High School in Garden Grove, California, and he is on the mound. Good to be back home at Three Rivers Stadium. 335 down the line, 375 to the power alley, 400 feet to straightaway center field. And, you know, it's uh, kind of unusual to do an opening day with a guy that's been with us for a lot of opening days. Uh, George Cleave, good friend of ours, been with us a lot of uh, ball games, engineering our games. understand George is a bit under the weather, not feeling well. George, we want you to know that our thoughts are with you today, and we hope you'll enjoy this broadcast as we bring it to you from Three River Stadium. Well, Milo, we're set to go. You were down on the field for the excitement of the free uh, game excitement, and... Uh, Something about opening day that just brings out the little boy and everybody. Well, it certainly does, and the enthusiasm is here. There's no doubt about it. This town is ready for their buckos to go, and stepping in to lead it off will be center fielder Andre Dawson. Dawson will be followed by Scott and then Cromartie. Hot dog wrappers and such will be blowing around this ballpark today. It's that kind of a day. It's windy and breezy. Everybody came bundled up for it, though, and they're ready for baseball 79 pirate style. Andre Dawson, right-hand batter, stands right in the middle of the batter's box. Bly Levin's first pitch, foul back, and we're underway, and it's strike one. Ends up in the press box, so the scribes get the first chance at a souvenir here today. Scott off uh, on deck to the left side. He had a great spring for them. They had to find a place for him, and he's starting in place of Dave Cash. Here's the pitch. Strike called, and it's 0-2. Good breaking pitch. Started away inside, broke over that plate. And it's no balls and two strikes. The Dutchman brings it. He foul tipped it evidently. And it's still 0-2. Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce weather, brother. We got bright sunshine for an opening day. <laughs> Justin, you did a good job. Great job with that luncheon yesterday, too. Got the bandwagon going. Bouncer right side. Captain Stargell bobbles it, picks it up, throws to Bly Levin. In time. Score it. Three to one. That ball played a few tricks with him, but it's cold. Your hands are cold. And the Bucks here today came out of that one all right because he got the good bounce right to him. I think every player in an opening day would like the first ball of the game to be hit to them. They would love to get that first chance out of the way because they're butterflies and you're just so tense and so pumped up. And uh, Willie has the honors of handling that first ground ball. And what a reception he got yesterday at that luncheon. A standing ovation and a touching one it was. Scott batting left-handed against Blylevin with nobody on base and one away. Pitch to him is up a strike call at the letter. Scott with a 333 spring had 18 hits. No balls, one strike. Blylevin, the opening day pitcher working. Here it comes. Way inside and low on a breaking ball, and the count is even at one and one. Be here tomorrow and again on Sunday. Tomorrow, a salute to the Super Steelers. Get here early for that. Then on Sunday, it's Stargell Parker Day. They'll be picking up all their trophies that they earned last year. Here is the one-one pitch. Inside, backs him out of there, two and one. And of course, tomorrow, the first 5,000 to come into the ballpark will get one of the new pirate secret weapons to wave. And on Sunday, everybody will get a beautiful picture of Captain Willie and the Cobra. Down low inside. Falls behind Scott. Three balls to one strike. Felipe Alou, who was quite a ball player from the Alou family. His brother Matty, of course, was a batting champion as a pirate. Felipe is their new third base coach. Ozzie Virgil been there a while. He's over at first. Swing and a foul back. To start the season, Dick Williams has six coaches. Pat Mullins, their hitting instructor, is going to be with them early, and then he'll go look at their minor leaguers a little bit. But today, an opening day, six coaches. Jim Brewer. Burn Rapp saw Norm Sherry before the game. He looks like he's lost a little weight, but he says he's feeling good. Well, he's running every day after that open heart surgery, and here he is right back in a coaching uniform. That's down low. If the umpire could see it among all the hot dog wrappers at home plate. And the first base runner is Rodney Scott, their second baseman, via the base on ball. Warren Cromartie stepping in now. Cromartie had a 279 spring. Good solid hitter, this fellow. And a member of a trio of outfielders that rates with any of them. They, they brought these kids along, Cromartie, 
Dawson and Valentine. Scott at first with a walk. He has some speed. The Dutchman will have to watch him. Throws over there, but does not get him. 335 to the foul pole, 375 to the power alleys, 400 to the center field wagon gate. Now Blylevin looks back, runner not going, pitch on the way, bouncer to Stennett. Could be two, flip to Frankie, one, fire to first, yes, the double play. Taylor May, Rennie to Frankie to Captain Willie, second to short to first, and Blylevin works through the first inning for the visiting Expos. No runs and no hits. And after a half an inning, the Expos are scoreless with no hits, and our Buckos are just now coming into bat. When you say goodbye, you've said a lot of things nobody else can say. When you say goodbye, you've gone as far as you can go to get the very best. There is no is Gary Carter, Tony Perez, great credentials over the years with the Reds and with the Expos, big RBI man, dangerous hitter, he's at first base, Rodney Scott, a surprise starter at second, edging out, Dave Cash, Chris Pyre, the shortstop, Larry Parrish, looked as though he blossomed last year the way they wanted him to, he's playing third base, in the outfield left to right, and we talked about this good young outfield, Warren Cromartie in left, Andre Dawson in center, Ellis Valentine in right. Pirate coaches in place. Joe Lonnett, the old beaver man, the third. Al Monchek is at first. So, we'd like to get off and running here against Rogers, Lanny, because usually, as with good pitchers, if you don't get them early, they stick around. They're tough to get, and he's one of those kinds. Uh, typically, at the start of a season, you'll see the pitchers uh, be ahead in terms of timing on the hitters. And, of course, when the colder weather comes around, there's uh, another disadvantage for the hitters. Steve Rogers, one of the premier pitchers, and if this club gives him enough runs throughout the year, he could be a 20-game winner in the National League. He has a but good fastball, a uh, sinking fastball, and a curve. All right, Frank Tavares leads it off, and the pitch to him swung on. A little looping pop out into shallow right center. Going to drop in at Texas League base hit. So Frank Tavares, who had his best year ever last year with the bat, starts it off with a Texas League single into right center field. We got a little indication that maybe that wind is going to bother balls of that kind today. You know, Milo, I couldn't help it. That ball was going up in the right center. I had a little flashback to the Friday doubleheader when we uh, won the ball game, that first game on a ball a little bit similar to that. Right center, high pop, dropped in. All right, we'll take it. And here is Omar Moreno, the newlywed, the new bridegroom is stepping up in here. What a spring he had, the best one ever. Omar hit 350. All right, Tavares at first. Let's see if Chuck Tanner likes to go to his running game in a hurry. He is. The throw down will be late. Stolen base. Well, it didn't take long, did it? How far are we away from the record? <laughs> and those of you who heard Chuck Tanner on the leadoff, man, he loves to have him running. You know that. That's his history. He didn't wait a pitch, brother. Right after Frankie got the hit, first pitch to Omar. Frankie was going. Carter's throw was in the dirt. And Tavares in scoring position with nobody out. The count is ball one on the antelope. The Cobras do up next. Look back by Rogers, the pitch. Bunting it up the first base side. Rogers over and grabs the ball. And I think they are going to say that it was foul when the pitcher got it in his glove. If the plate umpire's motion out that way... Rogers came over and grabbed the ball, but it looked like he had grabbed it in foul ground. My. Dave Pallone is the home plate umpire. Now they're talking with uh, Dick Williams and the first base umpire, and they're saying that he tagged him. A little confusion there. 
not the least of the confused were the men in blue, because finally, after Williams appealed, the plate umpire then asked the first base umpire, he says he's out. Well, on the play, Frankie came over, so in reality, Omar did what we wanted him to do, get the runner over to third. Here's Dave Parker. He's the picture boy who's on the cover of every magazine you pick up these days. Here's the pitch to him, swing and a miss. That ball sinking away from him, going down and away. So you score that last one, one unassisted. Parker with the most fabulous spring, hitting 470, 10 homers, 25 RBIs. He's won two straight batting titles. He's the defending most valuable player. Swing and a miss. Oh, and two. Good sharp breaking pitch, a slider right in on his hands. So Rogers started off with the ball down and away, brought it in on his hands on the second one. Rogers in front of the Cobra, two strikes. Captain Willie due up next. Dick Williams plays his infield up with Tavares at third and one out. Opening inning, here's the pitch. Strike three called right on his hand. So Parker looks at call, strike three, and leaves a runner at third. That's where you like to get that sacrifice fly ball at least. Now it's up to Stargell. Well, good location by Rogers. I think even if David got a piece of that ball, it wouldn't have been any more than a ground ball because he really ran the ball in on David. Willie Stargell for the spring at 200, three homers and seven RBIs. The comeback of the year in 78. Facing Rogers, who stretches and delivers. Fouled up to the left side, broke the bat off, the barrel of it went right by Rogers' feet, and it's laying out behind the mound, and Joe Lynette will go out to get it. Now, Tavares started it with a little looping Texas League single to right center, promptly stole second, advanced to third when Moreno bunting, bunted up the first base side, and after a moment of confusion, they finally said that the pitcher did indeed have the ball and tagged him. So that made it one out with a runner at third. Then the call strike three on Parker, making a two down. Now Stargell breaking a bat, fouling off the first pitch. Coming out now with a new war club. The on-deck hitter, Bill Robinson. Fans in the stands with their radios will notice that the Bucks have their names on the back. First time they've ever had that. Everybody will have them this year. League rule. No balls, one strike. Need that big clutch two-out hit from Captain Welly. Tavares. Wanting to come home with the first run of the season. Rogers checks him from the belt, brings it. Swing and a miss at a high pass ball. Strike two on Stargell. Rogers trying to work his way off the hook after being in first inning trouble quickly. Now is ahead of Stargell, two strikes with two down. Tavares up the line at third, maybe six or seven steps. No balls, two strikes as Carter drops the fingers. Rogers responds by stretching to the belt. Here's the pitch. Way high, almost threw it away. Carter had to jump up to get it. One ball, two strikes. The Pirates and the Montreal Expos for an opening series. All three afternoon games. Tomorrow, 2.15. Sunday, 105. Remember, all Sunday games this year will be at 105, whether they're single or double. One ball and two strikes. Stargell waiting. The pitch on the way. Breaking pitch with something off of it. Stayed high outside. Two balls and two strikes. Boy, you consider the weather that this town got up to this morning. This is just one heck of a crowd, I want to tell you. But they're dressed for it. And in the bright sunshine, doesn't feel that bad. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Rogers works his way out of a first inning trouble spot. And struck out Parker and Stargell to do it with Tavares 90 feet away. No runs, one hit. Stolen base. No errors, one left. We have played an inning. Milo Hamilton and Lanny Preteri, as always, with Pirate Baseball from Three Rivers today. Wish you're all here for the opener. After an inning, it's the Expos nothing, the Pirates nothing. Something wonderful. That's Center Video's Hollywood Home Theater. With something wonderful and entertainment for everybody. Take hockey, basketball, and baseball, for example. In the months ahead on Center Video, you'll see the NHL and NBA playoffs and those glorious Mets. And all because Center Video brings you sports and all-night movies from New York, clear as a crystal, plus those oldie but goodie movies on Channel 22. Then for the youngsters, the wonderful world of Disney with feature film hits such as Gus and Herbie Rides Again. Also during the next few months, you'll see 
Mel Brooks' High Anxiety, Neil Simon's Goodbye Girl, Sylvester Stallone in Fist, The Buddy Holly Story, Semi Tough with Burt Reynolds, and Coming Home with Jane Fonda. Center Video has something for everybody and something to look forward to, such as Saturday Night Fever, The Cheap Detective, The Fury, and Omen 2. Call Center Video, 231-7414. If you don't have Center Video, you don't have home entertainment. Call 231-7414. Go to the second inning, scoreless at Three Rivers. Valentine, the right fielder. Tony Perez, the first baseman. And catcher Gary Carter, due up in that order against Bert Flyleven. The Philly Fanatic is here, battling with our Pirate Parrot. And the Philly Fanatic <laughs> starts right off where he does at home. He's making time with one of the Pirates. Gave her a big smooch and then collapsed right on the diamond. <laughs> All right, here's Ellis Valentine. A 309 spring, one homer, eight RBIs. Here's a guy who can be just as good as he wants to be. Right fielder Ellis Valentine. All right, Bly Levin ready. And his first pitch in the second inning. Swung on and fouled out of play off to the right side. Valentine with a good arm, good outfielder. He can hit for power. He drives and runs and a good base runner for a big guy. He's a little in the mold of Parker. However, it doesn't seem to have the drive that a Parker does. No balls, one strike. Right-hand batting outfielder Ellis Valentine. He's been knocking some off that left shin, hasn't he? He's got a shin guard on. Outside, an off-speed pitch, straight change, one ball, one strike. Right-hand pitcher kicks and brings, and a fly ball, center field. Moreno started back, now pulls up, pounds the glove, Antelope has it. One away. Valentine with a fly ball to center. And that'll make it one down and bring up first baseman Tony Perez, who last year, as in many years, hurt the Bucks with his home run bat. Tony Perez had a 321 spring, four homers, 10 RBIs. He brings that bat back, and he is strong, and when he cocks it, no matter what the game or what the situation, he's a tough out fouled off. Almost got that ball by him. That was a late cut. There's that banner out in right field, Lanny. I told the fans to look at it long and hard in the pregame ceremonies. Think pennant. They've got it here today. They had it here last year. That was the one that was torn up the last weekend and the youngsters stayed up all night and worked on it. Made a new one. Fly ball center. Moreno back. Moreno there. Deep left center about four feet short of the track. So two fly balls to center. Moreno has reacted very well on those two balls because that wind is whirling in here. Very difficult often to tell in the circular stadium just how the winds are reacting, but it does appear on the two balls that are hit here in the second, Valentine and Perez's fly balls, that it uh, seems to be blowing in the center field area back towards home plate because those two balls seem to get up there in that wind and then kind of die back a little bit. Catcher Gary Carter, a 174 spring, but half of his eight hits were out of the park, four homers, eight RBIs. And a strike call right in on his hand. The on-deck hitter is third baseman Larry Parrish. We're in the second inning and no score. Pirates saw a first inning chance go by the board. Here's the pitch. Breaking pitch swung on fly ball right center. Reno going to have to get on his horse. Won't... Yes, he's got it. Unbelievable. Holy Toledo, what a play. Center field in three rivers where the antelope plays. And does he ever. He's going to get a standing ovation as he comes in here. None of the plays were easy. The last one was tough. He simply outran the ball. Great play by Omar Moreno. And the fans greet him as he comes in on the first base side. Three up and three down for Bly Levin. We played an inning and a half. Montreal nothing. The Pirates nothing. Think of yourself in a special way. in a personal world of space, comfort, and hushed luxury with a satisfying feel of the road under you and crisp, classic styling around you that says this is something special. And it is Monte Carlo by Chevrolet. Drive one and reward yourself. Think of yourself behind the wheel. Yeah, 
Chevrolet. Before we go to the Pirates' second and three rivers here on opening day with no star in our game as yet, but the crowd has been thrilled by a great running catch in deep right center by Omar Moreno. Let's break quickly for station identification. Let all of our stations around the five-state area tell you who they are and where they're coming from right here on this, the Pirate Baseball Network. Bill Robinson will lead it off in the second inning. Bill playing left field today. He'll be followed by second baseman Rennie Stennett and then the catcher at Ott. Robbie, after a slow start in spring training, ended up with a good one. Off-speed curve comes inside a high, ducks under at ball one. Robinson ended up 275 with three homers and ten runs batted in. Was bothered by a calf pull. There's a high foul up to the right side, one and one. Also had a little uh, cartilage pull in his uh, left chest that bothered him the last week of spring training. But knowing Bill Robinson as you do so well, he will play with those injuries. Rogers winding, 1-1 one, one pitch. Look out, off speed again, high inside, 2-1. and one. one of the new innovations here, they've planted grass. They've put sod down in our bullpens to keep that dirt from blowing around so much under the field. Now all they got to do is buy a new lawnmower. They haven't had one since they left Ford Field. Here's the 2-1 pitch, swung on and fouled out of play over to the left side. So Bill Robinson with a two-ball, two-strike count. Bucks batting in the second. One hit, it belongs to Frank Tavares. He's also stolen a base. All right, a level count of 2-2. Rogers rocks and brings it. Foul back, rolls up the screen here to the right side. Speaking of those covers that we were with Dave Parker, he and Jim Rice from the Red Sox share the cover on Sports Illustrated. Parker's the cover on the Sporting News. Baseball Digest. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and another foul out of play over to the right side. President of the Pirates, Dan Galbraith and the family and all the folks over from Columbus. His dad, the chairman of the board, John, I don't think was able to make it today because of the illness of Mrs. Galbraith. Bouncer third. Long throw by Parrish will get him on a bouncer. Tony Perez stayed right with it. A long throw, maybe from 15 back of third and right on the line. Parrish didn't seem to get a heck of a lot on the throw, but had enough to get the runner at first. Bill Robinson and it's one away. So third to first. Parrish to Perez. Here's Rennie Stennett. Rennie Stennett appeared in the spring games to be ready to go again full tilt. Made three marvelous plays Monday against the Twins in Orlando. Bouncer, deep short toward the bag. Spires throw to Perez, gets him. And it's two down. Short to first, Chris Spire to Tony Perez. That'll bring up catcher Ed Ott. Ott with a 271 spring, had three RBIs. First couple of weeks of spring training, Ott tried to battle through a sore shoulder. Then they just simply had to give him a few days off and let him be a designated hitter or play outfield in some of the B games. But as he came north, he felt that the shoulder was ready. Swing and a miss. Ran it up and in on the outer. Nobody on, two down. Second inning, Expos and Pirates scoreless so far. First game in a three-game set. The pitch. Checked it on an off-speed pitch. Did he go? They asked. Third base umpire says, no, he didn't. Puts the palms down. So it goes as a ball, and the count is even at one and one. Pirate baseball, 79. The battle and buck. Trying to get it off and running here against the Expos. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss with a fastball challenging him upstairs. There's no secret about it. The book uh, pitching against Dan out is he has trouble with that uh, pitch high and in, especially with a high fastball, and that's what Rogers is beating him right here. 1-2 one, pitch. Swinging and pops it right side. Second baseman Rodney Scott to his right and in, has it. And it's three up and three down for the Montreal right-hander, Steve Rogers. We've played through two innings. It's still Montreal nothing and the Pirates nothing. 
Whether you're at Three Rivers Stadium or at home, there is one big league taste treat that naturally goes with Pirates baseball, Con's Wieners, the official hot dog of the Pittsburgh Pirates. The reason they taste so good, the reason that they are used exclusively at the stadium is simple. Con's Wieners are made from quality ingredients. Con's uses lean beef and juicy pork, only first quality cuts of meat. They never add fillers or cereal extenders, and they don't use meat byproducts or artificial coloring. In fact, a pound of Con's Wieners contains less fat than an uncooked 16-ounce T-bone steak. Con's uses great meat, and that makes great-tasting wieners. You also should try Con's Big Buck Kielbasa Links, a coarsely ground blend of tender, tasty pork and beef with just the right spices. Big Bucks gives you that old-world kielbasa flavor. So if you're listening to the ball game, Con's Wieners and Big Bucks go with Pirates Baseball. Look for the Pittsburgh Pirates insignia on the package. It's your assurance of good taste. Remember, great meat makes great wieners. You can depend on cons. Well, as opening days come and go, a lot of people never miss them. But Phil Mackey of Oil City, he's attending his 32nd consecutive open air today. And our old pal Irv Bell out here today seeing an opener also. Has for many, many years. Tony Biderome and some of the players have a good friend. Tony, of course, our very fine trainer, along with the Candyman and Bruce Keeson and Jim Rickard and Willie Stargell, good friends of Little Joe Panabianco in Westmoreland Hospital. So, Little Joe, the guys are thinking about you, and as you listen to the game, hope you're feeling better. Larry Parrish, third baseman, will lead it off against Blylevin as we go to the third, no score. Fouled off, right side, back into the seat. Fire has moved on deck. Third inning. Blylevin walked Scott in the first, but then Camardi hit into a double play. Bouncer toward the hole and shoots through there. A diving Garner couldn't head it off. Robinson up with it, throws it into Tavares out by the second base bag. That is the first Montreal hit of the afternoon, and it comes to lead off the third inning. Old Straps left his feet and took the headlong dive, but just wasn't able to make it. Not for lack of effort, though, was it? Here is shortstop Chris Fire. Fire was bothered by a back ailment most of the spring, and as a result, hit only 118. Batting eighth in the order for Dick Williams today. Runner at first base, not a big lead. Lyleven's pitch down low. One ball and no strikes. Pitcher Steve Rogers will be next. Montreal figures to have the best team they've had in their history. They put together a good one in the last couple of years. Throw to first, not close. They've got a representative pitching staff now also. They don't give games away anymore. This is a good Montreal team. Throw to first, a little closer, but he's back in time. All right, he checks and looks back. Pitch on the way. Spire sends a high fly ball up to the right side. Spire is a good man to hit and run with. And he looked right there like, although the runner wasn't moving, it looked like he was trying to go to the opposite field with Bly Levin. Parrish, who started the inning with a base hit, through the hole on the left side, is at first base. Stargell trying to hold him close. Third inning. Pirates had the only threat that was in the opening inning. It didn't materialize. High chopper short. Frankie has to back up. His only play will be to stun it. Force play on Parrish. That ball took one big extra bounce. Frankie had to back up and let the ball play him a bit. That took any thought of a double playoff, and with the two big loops, might have been tough to do it anyway. But he gets the front man, and that's the main thing right there. Six to four, short to second, to Barris to stun it, and you put Spire at first base with a fielder's choice. Steve Rogers, the pitcher. Batting with the runner at first and Spire. One away. Montreal batting in the third inning. The hits are even at one. There's no score. There have been no errors in the early going. Expecting a bunt. And it comes high and inside. He kind of went down to a knee to get out of the way. Rogers now looking at his third base coach, Philippe Elou. What a leadoff man he used to be. He had 30 home runs one year as a leadoff man. Well, that gets you in front in a lot of games in a hurry, doesn't it? Strike one the count, and Garner thinks but again, squares away, but the ball came high inside. That'll even the count at a ball and a strike. 
The game goes on as the Pirates and the Montreal Expos play the Pirate home opener. Of course, several teams have already been underway. A couple days ago, some. Throw to first. Runner was leaning a little bit, got back. Yesterday, Ron Guidry had a no-hitter going into the sixth inning, then the roof fell in, and... Mike Caldwell, last year's comeback of the year in the American League, beat him in a route-going performance on opening day at Yankee Stadium. Now, thinking bunt, and then Blylevin steps away, and Garner backs off a bit. Garner's going to come up again, though, at third. Runner not going. Scores away to bunt. Bunts it up in the air. It's going to come back up on the screen. And it is one ball and two strikes. Runner at first. Fire. They're on a fielder's choice. Montreal batting in the third. We had some excitement in that first inning when Frankie got a hit and promptly stole second. Then, of course, the great play in the second inning by Omar Moreno simply outran a long fly ball in right center off the bat of Gary Carter. But no score to report. 0-0 on that big board here at Three Rivers. The pitch, he's going to bunt and even comes up empty and it's strike three. That is the first strikeout for the Dutchman here today. Oh, you look at his credentials, Lanny, and the time that he's been in the game and the career that he has ahead of him. Wyle Evans going to join that 3,000 strikeout total before he's through, and he's going to get to 2,000 early in this season. You know, Bert thought last year that, uh, blaming himself, he felt that in many games he, uh, he tried to rush a little bit late in ball games, and he felt that's what hurt him in certain circumstances in 78. All right, the pitch now to the leadoff batter, Dawson, a breaking pitch down and away, 1-0. Got off to a little shaky start last year, but once he got in the groove, he put some marvelous game. One ball and no strikes. Spire first. Not with a big lead. Stargell trying to keep him close. Fly up into the belt. Here's the pitch. Shot to third. Knocked down by Geiner. Going to have to make a long throw, and he got him. That's the way to stay with it. Strap. Ball dropped right at his feet when he knocked it down. Had the good, strong throw on target to Stargell. Geiner across the diamond, then it retires the side with no runs, one hit, no errors, and Spire was left. We've played into the middle of the third. Pitchers battle so far. Expos nothing, Pirates nothing. the tall skinny right-hander who comes out of the Pirates bullpen in the late innings, hopefully to record a win or a save. The Red Bull liked my work out of the bullpen so much, they asked me to be their spokesman for special Pirate promotions. And I like their food so much, I said yes. You'll be hearing about these promotions very soon. But right now, I just want to invite you back to Three Rivers Stadium for some great baseball excitement and back to the Red Bull Inn for a great dining experience. Yeah, you'll be back! Going to the bottom of the third at Three Rivers on opening day. And, of course, this big weekend with a lot of things to come. Tomorrow, Art Rooney, the grand gentleman of pro football with his super Steelers. Many of them will be here. They'll be honored by the Pirates. And the first 5,000 tomorrow will get that big new secret weapon as a gift. Then on Sunday, a salute to Stargell and Parker. They get all their trophies from last year and they... Also, we'll give to you, everybody who comes Sunday, a beautiful, and I just saw it before the game, a beautiful color picture of Captain Willie Stargell and the Cobra Dave Parker. You talk about a souvenir suitable for framing. That picture you're going to get on Sunday is just that. Here's Garner getting another hand for staying with that play to retire the Expos in the top of the inning. And the pitch to Scraps is low of all. Garner found himself a little bit the first three weeks of spring training with the bat, but the last week... Looked like he had it back. Ended up with a 268 spring. Swinging and fouling way up to the right side. One ball, one strike. Looked as though the last week that he choked up on the bat a little and shortened up his stroke. And uh, was just getting those nice lane drive hits out over second and out over short. He's batting now with a ball and a strike. Leading off the third. Blylevin on deck. Rogers delivering. 
Here's a strike. Boy, that had some velocity over the knees on the outside corner. You know, I think to an extent, uh, Phil has a habit from time to time of uh, trying to carry a little bit of the club. I think in spring training, he wanted to help the club get off to that fast start, and I think he maybe pushed himself uh, more than he really had to. All right, so now with all the garbage <laughs> flying around by home plate and blowing into our dugout, candy wrappers, looks like potato chips, hot dogs, <laughs> some brown baggers also here, and it's flying all over the place. There's a foul. He jammed him, almost saw the bat off, fouled it back here over on the left side. And it's one ball and two strikes. By the way, I don't think we've mentioned it yet. Uh, Jerry Royce is in a pirate dugout. If you're wondering the uh, outcome of that yet, it's still pending. It looks like uh, it's going to go through, but uh, still some contractual things to be worked out. So Royce is still in a pirate uniform. All right, the one two to scrap iron. Strike three call. A buzz bomb on the outside corner. Well, he gave Scraps a couple of tough pitches to handle away. That is his third strikeout. You got Parker and Stargell back to back in the first. Now starts off the first getting Garner. Here's the pitcher, Bert Blylevin, the birthday boy. His 28th birthday. And when he was celebrating his first birthday, I was walking down the aisle. Hey, that's right. Today's an anniversary date for you, isn't it? Yep. 27th hey. wedding anniversary today. Swing and a foul back. Well, congratulations to you and Arlene. Thank you very much. And the bride, who still looks as good as she did that first day, is here. Is what happened to the day? groom? <laughs> the groom's gotten a little older. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swinging and a high bounce back of the mound. Could be trouble. Second baseman won't have a play. Barehanded it and then dropped it. And it rolled clear a pass to third baseman. Ball got on that artificial carpet and jumped about 30 feet in the air. It was a rush to get it from the pitcher, second baseman, and shortstop. Rodney Scott, their second baseman, tried to barehand it and throw, but came up empty, and the ball rolled away from him, so Blylevin is on with the second pirate hit of the game. All right, here is Frank Tavares, who has the other hit. He started the first inning with it, a Texas League single in the right center field, then promptly stole second base. So here we are with a runner at first. Fly 11 has on the windbreaker. he got to wear it today, brother. You don't want that arm to get chilled today. The stretch look back, pitch to Frankie. Going to bunt. Low outside, laid off of it, and it's ball one. This is the kind of a game where you play for a run. Might be enough with two great pitchers going, Fly 11 and Rogers. One ball and no strikes. The look, the pitch. Bunning foul rolls off to the right side. Al Monchek will pick it up over there. Well, I was especially pleased with the opening ceremonies today to see the fans that remembered and gave the great welcome to Bob Skinner, who's back as our hitting coach, and to Harvey Haddock, who's our new pitching coach. I know they loved every minute of it and every round of applause they got. Made them feel welcome, and we're glad to have them back from the coaching family. Joining the holdovers, Joe Lanette and Al Manchek. One ball, one strike. Tavares waiting. See if the butt is still on. It is. But it's into the dirt, and he lays off a good stop of that ball by Gary Carter. He's a good one back there. He's alive, and he's got a good arm. Used to play the outfield. They made a catcher out of him two or three years ago, and he's responded back there in good shape. Two balls and one strike. Fly 11 at first with an infield hit. Stretched by Rogers, pitch on the way. No but this time. Bouncer third. Parrish will go to second one. Fire to first. Double play. So that goes around the horn. Parrish to Scott to Perez. Third to second to first. And the double play ends the inning. No runs. One hit. No errors. With the DP, nobody left. We have now played three. Milo Hamilton and Lanny Frateri with exciting battle and buck baseball for you all season long. And after three innings, Montreal Expos nothing, Pittsburgh Pirates nothing. Updating the news, some so-called bugs in a pumping system are reportedly hampering the cleanup efforts at the Three Mile Island nuclear plant near Harrisburg. The pumping is designed to transfer radiated gas from the main reactor building to a radiation-free outlet. The national unemployment rate remains stable at 5.7% for the month of March. Experts see the figure as showing the economy continues to be strong. 
The Coast Guard continues efforts to rescue 20 crewmen from a Canadian ore freighter breaking up in Lake Erie. The vessel ran into trouble as hurricane force winds whipped the Great Lakes. The Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission has banned motorcycles and many types of towed vehicles from the toll road. Due to high winds, the ban will be in effect until further notice. The weather outlook, very windy and cold the rest of the day. A high of only 33. Some snow flurries tonight. Diminishing winds dropping down to 22. Sunny, warmer tomorrow, looking for a high of 45. More news headlines following the sixth inning of Pirate Baseball. John Hadar, KDKA News. Steve Rogers on the mound. Their base hit belongs to Parrish. For the Pirates, no runs, two hits, no errors. The base hits belong to Tavares and Blylevin. Blylevin, of course, rolling along here against Rogers. Both pitchers doing very well. Lanny, I think one note we ought to give to the fans listening and also to those in the ballpark. With the radios on, we've got a new traffic pattern making it easier to get out of this ballpark. That's been one of the beefs and the ball club and the city fathers have responded to it. They're going to make it easier to get out, and when you leave the ballpark, any time you come, get the new traffic maps as you leave the stadium. They're available at the information booths. And I think if that's one pattern we've seen here in the shakeup in the front office of doing things, they've been good listeners, and they're trying to do things to respond to the fans' wishes. And we're going to respond to the wish of Lanny for Terry right now and get him in here for the middle. All right, thank you very much. That's right, the... Folks in city, county, and state government have all helped in this new traffic flow idea. And people here this weekend, the opening weekend, will receive special maps to outline the uh, new traffic flow ideas. Rodney Scott, switch hitter, batting from the left side against Blylevin. He takes high ball one. We've got a scoreless ball game in the top of the fourth inning on a sunny opening day. Thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. Bert Blylevin working against the Montreal Expos. 1-0 pitch. Scott takes a strike, and it's 1-1. One one. Couple of the things. Scott had a great spring. Second of all, uh, they look concerned. David Cash has had trouble turning the double play. They think Scott might be their answer at second base. And no doubt about it, with Scott in the lineup, he gives Montreal an uh, added touch of speed. 1 1 pitch breaking ball inside, and it's 2 and 1. Want to say hello and congratulations to uh, Mike and Sally Dedurich earlier this week, and we forgot to do it in our final spring game. But they celebrated the birth of their first child, Ryan Michael DeDurich. Mike, a uh, good young sports writer with the McKeesport Daily News. To Mike and Sally, our congratulations. Rodney Scott. Picked up from the Chicago Cubs. Along with that fielder, Jerry White, in the deal that sent Sam Mejias over to the Cubs trade up in December of 78. Well, the National League yesterday, the New York Mets beat the Chicago Cubs 10-6. to And the San Diego Padres knocked off the National League defending champion Los Angeles Dodgers 4-3. to Games today and all the other games in the National League are tonight. The San Francisco Giants at Cincinnati to play the Reds. Of course, the Giants won the National League opener on Wednesday, bombing Tom Seaver. John Montefusco is scheduled to go for the Giants against Tom Hume and the Reds. Philadelphia will be at St. Louis, start of a weekend set for the Phillies and Cardinals. Steve Carlton against John Denny. Atlanta's at Houston. Paul or uh, Phil Necro, a 19-game winner of a year ago against Houston right-hander and 18-game winner of last year, James Rodney Richard. And the Padres and the Dodgers again in Los Angeles tonight. Randy Jones, 13 and 14 last year against Don Sutton, 15 and 11. Here at Three Rivers, we're in the fourth inning. Two balls and a strike on Rodney Scott. Scott walked in the first inning. There's a ground ball up the middle. Shortstop Tavares to his left. Now near the bag, has it throws to Stargell. And one away in the fourth inning. Good play by Frankie. He was cheating a couple of steps to his right, closer to the third base line. And in a bit with Rodney Scott in the batter's box. One down. Nobody on. Top of the fourth. Here's Warren Cromarty. Cromarty bounced into a double play in the first inning. I want to welcome all of our news stations along the radio network. 
network that goes all the way from Olean, New York, down into the deepest reaches of almost heaven, West Virginia. Whether you're in New York State, Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, or Maryland, listening, welcome aboard to the 79th season. Pitch from Blylev and the Cromartie down low, 2-0. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Jammed him in a fly ball in the right center field. Omar Moreno drifting under it. Glove up, makes the catch. And two down in the fourth inning. Moreno has four putouts in this game already. He handled all three fly balls in the second, including the one on Carter, which Omar made an outstanding running catch in the power alley. Sent along a speedy recovery wish to uh, one of our concession men. First time in 55 years that he's missed a pirate opener. Pat Mazza. Or Mazza. Pat. Hope he's getting better. Here's Ellis Valentine. He's 0 for 1. First pitch from Blyla and ball one. Nobody on, two down. We're in the fourth. The Expos have only had two base runners against Blyla and one reached in a walk and the other on a base hit. A single. Valentine takes a strike and it's 1 and 1. He's got Valentine on the cleanup spot. We've seen him number three spot. Now I got him number four. 1-1 one, one pitch. Down low, 2-1. And, and a note from Vice President Joe Toole. Passed it along that uh, Mr. Ange Monaco and Mr. Mike Lebov. Great pirate fans. They're missing their first pirate opener in many, many years. Ange and Mike. Good to see you out here back with us real soon. Pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Lang Valentine straight away with the exception of Parker. Davis deep and right and a couple of strikes towards the gap. 2-2 pitch, curveball, check swing, foul ball. Off to the right, out of play. Bird Blylevin, born in Holland. He and his family moved to Saskatoon, Canada when Bird was two years of age. And then when Bird was five, the family moved into California. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Outside, three and two. Bert's dad in California drives a molasses truck. Big family. Bert is uh, one of seven children. He has four brothers and two sisters. And this is his 28th birthday. Nobody on, two down, no score in the fourth inning. Three two pitches, down low ball four. Second walk issued by Blylevin. You know, Lanny, we've talked about it with a little nip in the air here today, but you really got to give these great athletes a lot of credit. A lot of people say, well, they're pros. They got to be playing in this kind of weather. But in this kind of game where you don't have that chance to go for that contact and uh, brush it off and get ready, it's tough to get loose on a day like today. And you see Blylevin continually blowing hot air into his hand. It's tough on the hitters. Every time they make contact, that bat stings today. Yeah, it's a little different. Pitcher is fouled off by Perez. He lined it down there our bullpen. Strike one. Fine catch down that left field line. And it makes it doubly tough when you think 48 hours ago we were basking in 80 degree temperature. Yeah, it's tough for the fans too, trying to catch a foul ball. If you don't bring a pair of gloves along on a day like today, you'll remember opening day for about four months. Here's a stretch by the Dutchman, throw to first base, and Valentine is back safely two down. Nothing like an opening day. Oh, it is something. Here's the stretch by Burke. Oh, one pitch. Over the top of the fastball. Perez takes a strike, and Lylan has Blylevin and Perez in a hole 0 2. You know, Dale Barry, remember I talked about it on the air the other day. He told me how much it meant to him to be here, that he was going to be here opening day. I watched him as I was mentioning him in the dugout for the opening ceremony. His eyes were as big as saucers. Oh. <laughs> Here's the 0 2 pitch. Bounce foul outside of third. His dad was very young when his dad played with the Yankees, but I'm sure he remembers a lot of the opening days of the New York Mets. He's a real study in case in point that no matter how used you'd think you'd get to it, growing up with it all around him, he was more excited than anybody on this opening day. Valentine at first, two down. Here's the stretch by Blylevin on the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball outside, 1-2. and two.
Valentine at first base. He walked after two away. Rodney Scotland off the inning and bounced that. Cromartie flied out. Here they do with Valentine here on a one-two pitch to Perez. He's running. Thought he might be. Ball two. Hot throw to second base. Not in time. Ball hit the runner, but Tavares backing up as the ball skipped into center field. Had a feeling that with two strikes, they were going to run Valentine there. And the count two and two. No score in the ball game. Valentine is the first Montreal runner to reach second base. Bucks had a chance in the first. We were knocking at the door with Tavares at third. Rogers closed the lid on the Pirate opening the inning rally. 2-2 pitch. Over the top of the curveball struck him out. Second strikeout for Bly Levin. Montreal to the fourth. No runs. No hits. One man left on base. And after three and a half innings of play, it's the Pirates nothing and Montreal nothing. When you say Just going to a song. It's one of my favorites, too, by Herbie Mann called Superman, and it's a good one. Bottom of the fourth inning, about to come your way. Steve Rogers. We're in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood this afternoon. He's battling the Bucks in a scoreless ball game, and bottom of the fourth, it'll be Omar Moreno, Dave Parker, and Willie Stargell. I want to send out uh, congratulations to uh, sportscaster John Sanders and producer director George Christensen. The entire staff that put together last night's special on TV2. Looking to the Pirates in 79. An excellent half hour television production featuring all the Pirates. Special features of Phil Garner, Willie Stargell, and Dave Parker. So John and George and the entire crew put that together. Spent a lot of time and put a lot of work in on it. Our congratulations. It was very well done. Oh, my Moreno. Leading it off, left-handed battery takes high ball one. Larry Parrish is up a couple of steps at third. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Line to left. Base hit. Gromart is going to play it on one hop. That is hit number three for the Bucks. Lead off single, and Moreno went to the opposite side. It's important keys. One Omar hitting the ball on the ground more and going to the opposite field, and he went to left field there. Dave Parker will step in. Dave looks at a called third strike in the first inning. Bonchek having a word. Pirate first base coach with base runner Omar Moreno. All right, now Omar is ready. Still time for a moment. First base umpire is Joe Schratz. Of the four umpires working today, the one behind the plate, Dave Pallone, is a professional umpire from the minor league. Go to first base. Pallone, four years in the International League. His contract has been purchased by the National League, and that is uh, pretty much what the National League is doing in this opening weekend. They've picked up the contracts of some minor league umpires and are using them to supplement Local umpires or guys that have had professional experience, like uh, Ron Hudson, who's a second base umpire. He worked the Appalachian League a couple of years ago. Throw to first. 
Omar dives back safely. I think Blake Cullen told me they now have four umpires under contract plus Paul Pryor. And he indicated that they would, even uh, if and when the other umpires come back, they'd stay uh, in the National League and work the game. Runner going. Pitch is fouled off up on the screen. Strike one. And they have uh, special advisory people from the National League in all of the cities. Blake Cullen is here. Probably saw Tom Gorman downstairs, too. Uh, he's the supervisor of this crew, Lanny, and uh, he's here to instruct them and relax them. Also to go over the ground rules in great detail. He was down in the field doing a lot of that so that they would be ready for the opening assignment. Tom Gorman, former National League umpire and quite an after-dinner speaker. Go to first base. Also has a new book that's coming out that I'm looking forward to. Is that the title on that yet? I have not, uh, and I'm hoping while he's here, maybe we can get him on to talk a little bit about it. He's All a right. funny guy. No score, bottom of the fourth. Throw to first base. Moreno dives back safely. Pirates here in the fourth inning, a leadoff single by Omar. Pirates back in the first inning got a leadoff single from Tavares, then Frank swipes second, moved to third on Moreno's front. But Rogers was able to punch out Parker and Starger to close down the Pirate first inning. 0-1 pitch, Parker swings, pops it foul, third base side. It's going to be out of play. Dargill's on deck. Parker in a hole, 0-2. That was the case likewise in the first inning. Go to first base. Omar Moreno, he's been in the Pirate organization for a decade now. Signed as a 16-year-old. and Looks like this is the year that he had a chance to really come into his own. Likeable young man. Pensive young man. Rogers at the belt. Throw to first. And they got him. Perez makes the tag. 1-3 on the pickoff. Kept going that way. And Perez takes the tag on Moreno to pick him off. One away. Bottom of the fourth inning. We mentioned Dave Pallone behind the plate. Joe Schratz at first. Ron Hudson at second. Joe Mibus is the third base umpire. He's from Dormont. Which is up and into Parker one and two. Yeah, quite a spring for Dave. 470, 10 home runs. Hit safely in all spring games, but two. It finished the spring with a 10-game hitting streak. 1-2 pitch and a drive out of the center field. Dawson and Cromarty converging, and Cromarty in left center hauls it in. Mentioned earlier that the wind appears to be blowing straight in, or a lot of wind that's bringing the ball and holding it up in center field. That was the case there with Cromarty able to go over it, and he was more into center field than he was left center. Two away. Here's first baseman Willie Stargell. Stargell struck out of the first. Bottom of the fourth. No score in the ball game. Off speed from Rogers outside, ball one. Steve Rogers delivers. Stargell swings and a broken bat base hit into right center field. Valentine plays it on one hop, flips it back in. Pirates with four. It's Tavares, Fly 11, Moreno, and now Stargell. Willie's on with two down, last of the fourth. That was one of the trademarks of. Uh, the Bucks last couple of years. Timely two-out hitting, and a guy who last three years has been a master at two-out hitting, Bill Robinson, steps in. Robbie 0 for 1, bounce to third. Here's a stretch by Rogers. The pitch to Robinson, a ground ball to short. Spire flips the second baseman, Scott. They force Stargell, and the Pirates are retired in the fourth inning. No runs, two hits, one left. After four innings of play, opening day 1979. The Pirates nothing and Montreal nothing. 
Something Wonderful. That's Center Video's Hollywood Home Theater. With something wonderful and entertainment for everybody. Take hockey, basketball, and baseball, for example. In the month ahead on Center Video, you'll see the NHL and NBA playoffs and those glorious Mets. And all because Center Video brings you sports and all-night movies from New York, clear as a crystal, plus those oldie but goodie movies on Channel 22. Then for the youngsters, the wonderful world of Disney with feature film hits such as Gus and Herbie Rides Again. Also during the next few months, you'll see Mel Brooks' High Anxiety, Neil Simon's Goodbye Girl, Sylvester Stallone in Fist, The Buddy Holly Story, Semi Tough with Burt Reynolds, and Coming Home with Jane Fonda. Center Video has something for everybody and something to look forward to, such as Saturday Night Fever, The Cheap Detective, The Fury, and Omen 2. Call Center Video, 231-7414. If you don't have Center Video, you don't have home entertainment. Call 231-7414. Yeah, for the opener, everybody decked out in uh, new uniforms. The grounds crew has uh, new jackets, new pants. Members of the pirate staff have some new caps that they're wearing. Good to see Lou Bucci again. Good friend who runs the press elevator. American League afternoon games. Texas at Detroit canceled due to inclement weather. And uh, the White Sox are at Baltimore to be Ken Krevick against 20-game winner Jim Palmer. Take that, would you? Thank you. <laughs> Top of the fifth inning. No score in the ball game. It'll be Gary Carter. Carter flied out, and Moreno made an outstanding, typical antelope running catch. Expos have one hit off by 11. Pirates have gotten four hits off Rogers. Blyland of his first pitch to Carter inside ball one. Tonight in the American League, Minnesota's at Oakland. Probable pitchers Dave Goltz against Rick Lankford. California at Seattle, Nolan Ryan against McLaughlin. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Just inside, 2-0. Good to see Duffy Dyer, a former Pirate catcher now with his Montreal club. Duffy's had a back injury this spring, says he feels healthy, and he looks good. Duffy with a brand-new three-year contract as a free agent with the Expos. There's a strike, 2-1, and one, and Dyer will back up Gary Carter. And then the uh, third catcher for this Montreal club will be Kenny Maka, young man who was drafted in the minor league draft by the Expos, and Maka had an outstanding spring. Hit 357 for the Expos. Carter swings and a drive to left, well hit. Bill Robinson going back, and it is a home run. Gary Carter jumping on a 2-1 pitch from Burt Blylevin, and Montreal has scored the first run of the year. The Expos take a 1-0 lead. Carter, a year ago, 20 home runs, 72 runs batted in. And has the first home run of the year for Montreal. Nobody out, nobody out. Top of the fifth. Here's third baseman Larry Parrish. Parrish with a base hit in the third. Only other Montreal hit. He takes a strike in the inside corner. Oh, one pitch. Swung on and a drive down the left field line, but it's going to curve foul. Into the seats up over the Pirate bullpen. No ball, two strikes. Well, the world champion Pittsburgh Steelers will be saluted tomorrow afternoon here at the stadium. Art Rooney will be honored before the game and will throw out the first pitch. Also, some of the Steelers will participate in a home run hitting contest prior to the game, and that's not all. The Pirates' new secret weapon will be unveiled tomorrow, and the first 5,000 fans attending the game will get one free. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Check swing. Check the first base umpire, but he didn't go. One ball, two strikes. So, if you love the Pittsburgh Steelers and like to honor them for their great season, plus see a great baseball game, the spot tomorrow is here at Three Rivers tomorrow afternoon for the Super Saturday salute to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Game time, 2.15. Gates will open tomorrow at 12.45. Pitch inside to Parrish. Two ball, two strikes. Fly 11 delivers, and it's outside. So, Burt jumped down in front, 0-2, and, and now it's a full count. Montreal 1, Pirates nothing. Top of the fifth inning. Payoff pitch. Foul off to the right. Well, 
today. The U.S. Marine Corps, German Bugle Corps was on hand. All service color guard. 3-2 pitch. And flights foul. Down into the Montreal bullpen. Once again, the bullpens are in the opposite corners. Montreal bullpen down the right field line and the Pirate bullpen down the left field line. The Newcastle Red Hurricane Marching Band is going to perform tomorrow here at the stadium. 3-2 pitch, swung on and popped up foul down the right field line, back out of play. So Parrish hanging tough on a couple of 3-2 pitches from Burt Blylevin. Ready again, the 3-2 pitch. Swung on and popped behind the Pirate dugout. Blylevin got the ball up and in. And Parrish was able to battle it off. Bert Blylevin celebrating his 28th birthday today, facing the Montreal Expos in the opener. Don Robinson will pitch for the Pirates tomorrow against Ross Grimsley of the Montreal Expos. Here's the 3-2 pitch. A base hit. Skimmer in the right field. Parrish is two for two. Runner on. Nobody out in the fifth inning. Montreal leading one to nothing. Here's shortstop Chris Spire with Steve Rogers, their pitcher on deck. Shortstop Chris Spire. Because I have to have a word with Bert Blylevin. Mentioned earlier that Bert felt one of the problems of a year ago that he had a tendency to rush things a bit late in ball games. And over the uh, winter months, Bert uh, talked with a visual dynamics expert. The principle being that you should visualize a, a pitch before you actually throw it. All right here's the stretch. Runner going. Pitch is swung on and fouled off. Strike Manny, one. Manny Sanguin just headed down toward the bullpen with our new bullpen member, Enrique Romo. With him, so, with two straight hits here, one of them being a homer, Chuck Tanner and Harvey Haddix probably feel that maybe they need to get somebody heated up down there. Could be very. Milo mentioned earlier, they like the day tough to, to get loose. Burt was uh, coasting along pretty good. First four innings, had given up only one hit, had walked a couple of batters. Line 11, of course, a good control pitcher. One strike pitch, ground ball right side. Stennett has it. Turning, throwing to Bly 11, covering, and they got a good play. Stargill and Stennett converts on the ball. Stennett had to make the play, and Bly 11 had to cover first. Well, we've had some good defensive plays, and that one 4-1. to one, The out at first base. On the ground ball, Parrish moves down to second. Boy, Rennie really covered some ground there, didn't he? Very impressive, and of course, going far to his left to make the glove stop. And then having to turn quickly and throw partially off balance to a moving target, Blylevin in this case. Here's Steve Rogers. Went the big out right there. Runner at second. Breaking pitch outside, ball one. Montreal one, Pirates nothing, top of the fifth. A leadoff home run by Gary Carter. And indeed, Romo is warming up in the Pirate bullpen. 1-0 pitch. Line shot. Love right center. Hold it down. Two away. Slicing line drive right side of the infield. Stennett. Jumping up and pulling down the rebound to close out Rogers and two away. So Stennett has turned in back-to-back defensive gems here in the fifth. So the cold weather that you worry about him, especially probably more than anybody on the club, he's responded with two gems here in a row. Well, it's the right ankle, of course, fractured near the end, August of 77, and then in spring training this year, twisted that left ankle. But he got the good spring and was able to make the play. Here's the top of the batting order, Andre Dawson, who's 0 for 2, has bounced out twice and takes high ball 1. Those two defensive plays right there could be a catalyst. Close that Montreal here in the fifth and maybe open up the Bucks offensively in the bottom of the fifth. It's one nothing Montreal. 1-0 pitch. 
Ground ball. Base hit left field. Robinson charging. Rounding third is Parrish. Here's the throw to the plate. It's not in time, and the runner moves down to second base. I had to go out and get the ball. So on the throw. Dawson will get credit for an RBI single go to second on the throw. It's now 2 nothing Montreal. Dawson and Parrish swapping positions. Now it's Dawson down at second base. Expos have four hits. Three of the four here in the fifth inning. Here's second baseman Rodney Scott. Walked in the first inning. And bounced to short of the fourth. Left-handed batter deep in the batter's box. Swings and pops and foul. Scott played a little bit at third base for the Cubs last year. Steve Octaveras, you'll recall a year ago, was out some time with injury. Today's meeting between the Pirates and the Expos, it's the second time that these clubs have met in an opening day. The other was back on April the 10th, 1974. Pitch inside, one and one. The Expos won that game 12 to 8 in 13 innings. A home run by Carter. Two out RBI single by Dawson driving in Paris, giving Montreal a 2 0 lead. Time is called. The wind whipping around and kicking up some of the dirt around the home plate area. Y11 set checks the runner. 3 2 pitches fouled off. Billy Fanatic here today to welcome the Pirate Parrots to the National League. And the Bucks will be in Philadelphia. Two games set with the Phillies Monday night and Wednesday night. John Candelaria is scheduled to go against Dick Ruthman in a Monday game. And then it looked like uh, Burt Y11 would go against Steve Carlton in a Wednesday game. 3-2 pitch, line to Garner, he knocked it down, throws to Stargell, and Scott is out. Montreal in the second gets two runs on three hits, solo home run by Carter, one left on after four and a half. It's Montreal two and our Pirates nothing. It's natural, you want the best, the reef full of brass ring. To find the trappings, need the wrappings, it's a natural thing. Imitation for you. We've got something for you. No, you're gonna like it. It's the natural thing. Come on. Come on, get daily. Come on. Come on, get natural. Come up to the natural thing. Compare prices on fruit juice products. You may be spending more money for less quality. Daily Juice asks you to compare prices. Daily Juice products have a bonus of vitamin C plus the pulp, the natural fiber of the fruit. Compare prices. You'll buy dailies and get all the goodness for less. Come on. Come on, get daily. Come on. Come on, get natural. Come up to the natural thing. Fifth inning. Steve Rogers for Montreal. Now it's on the mound with a two nothing lead. Rennie Stennett will be leading off the last half of the fifth inning. That's since 1971. The Pirates are five and three in opening day games. Sixth time the Pirates have begun the season at Three Rivers. Last year the Bucks opened up, knocked off Chicago. Yeah, with the Pirates starting at home and uh, quite a few of our April games here at Three Rivers Stadium, a good chance to, to indeed get off to a good start in 1979. Pirate club that played so very well at Three Rivers in 78. First that big long home winning streak near the end of the season kept us in the chase here's the pitch extended it's a strike on the outside corner ready grounded to short his first time up back in the second 2 nothing Montreal here's the 0-1 pitch and foul out of play Pirates played 10 of their first 12 games at home
After the two games in Philadelphia, Monday and Wednesday of next week, come home for a week-long set. Four against the Cardinals, three against the Phillies. 0-2 pitch. Stand it. Swings and misses. Carter will tag Stennett, and that is strikeout number four for Steve Rogers. Rogers, a good control pitcher. He's not walked the Pirate batter. 2 nothing. Montreal leads. Last half of the fifth. Here's the young man from Muncie, Pennsylvania, Ed Ott. 0 for 1. Left-handed batter. Well, we want to take a moment to welcome a good friend to the KDK radio family. Former Pirate pitcher Steve Blass will be hosting a telephone talk show following all Pirate home games on Saturdays. And it'll start this Saturday, Steve's for a show. This day and out is filed back. That's on our flagship station, KDKA Steve Blass, former Pirate pitcher. Who, when Steve was down with our Charleston Ball Club in 1974 and I was the broadcaster with the Charlie, Steve used to come up in the booth and do a little broadcasting there. We hope that you'll make plans to join Steve for his first show on Saturday following our ball game. That's tomorrow. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Rogers. Swung on a drive into right center field. Valentine and Dawson over and back. That ball is gone! Home run! And on! Oh, Carried well, the Otter. Bring us back to within one. So the two catchers here this afternoon have been home run. Garner swings, driving to right field. Valentine going back, warning track, and reaches up, makes the catch. Two away. Slicing drive, Valentine had to go back, and he made the grab. Montreal leading two to one. Carter homered for Montreal with nobody out on the top of the fifth. That off the Pirate catcher is homered here in the bottom of the fifth. And throughout our broadcast in 1979, Pirate fans will be receiving tickets with every Pirate home run. Here's Blylev, and he takes a strike. You'll be hearing details throughout the broadcast, throughout the 1979 season, on how you can send in your postcard and possibly win tickets and maybe a color TV set. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Strike on the inside corner. So our first winner of the year for Ed Ott's home run is Donna Darty. Uh, Parker, Pennsylvania. Congratulations, Donna. You've won a pair of tickets to a future Pirate home game. 0-2 pitch. Down low, 1-2. and two. Donna Doherty of Parker, Pennsylvania. Our first winner in our home run contest. Every Pirate home run is worth a couple of tickets to a Pirate fan. Fly 11 looks at a call. Third strike. Five strikeouts for Rogers in five innings. The Bucks in the fifth get a run on a hit. The home run by Ed Ott. Nobody left on after five. It's Montreal two and our Buckos one. From the wheat fields out in Kansas to the city and by the bay. Along the Chevrolet, a new generation car bought and embraced by more than a million people in the first two years. This year, drive the car America has driven to the top. The new Chevrolet, the Priest and Impala for 1979. From the desert north of Phoenix to the freeways of LA. Day 1979. By the way, 
talking about is not just for listeners of our flagship station, but rather it's for uh, listeners up and down the entire pirate network. They're listening to your local stations, they'll be telling you where to send your postcards and to get in on the home run contest. Before we have the play-by-play story of the sixth inning, we'll step out and pause for station identification. This is the Pirate Baseball Network. This is Roy Fox inviting you to join me in the Fox's Den. Tonight, right here, 6 o'clock, 333-9393 on KDKA Pittsburgh. With Lionel Hamilton, this is Lanny for Terry. Top of the sixth inning, Montreal leading 2-1. to one. Against Bert Fly, 11 and the Pirates. Warren Cromarty will lead off. Cromarty is 0-2, has passed into a double play and slide to Moreno in right center. He's their number three hitter in the batting order. That's side ball one. Dick Williams ball club that has three players that were on the 78 Pirates in spring training of a year ago. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Stops up the middle, short stop Tavares. Up behind the second base back, throwing but not in time to get the speedy Cromarty. Ball took an unusual hop out by second. The ball seemed to catch Tavares in the palm of the glove. Frank had to hesitate a moment. And it's been scored as an infield single. Cromarty is on, leading off the sixth. Five hits for Montreal. Brings up their cleanup batter, Alice Valentine. So our correction, make it an A6. Valentine fly to center and walk. Fly 11 in the first, five plus innings, two strikeouts, two walks. Runner leads away. The pitcher swung on and popped foul down the first base side. Talking about people who wore the pirate uniform. 78, Duffy Dyer, Kenny Maka, of course, and Elias Sosa with our club in spring training a year ago. Here's the one strike pitch, and it's down low, one and one. Montreal 2, Pirates 1, top of the sixth inning. 1-1 one, one pitch. There's a fly ball into right field. Parker fell down. The ball is well hit. It's caught by Parker. No! Billy dropped it. Looked like he had it for a moment. Now they've got Valentine between first and second. Dennis throw to Stargell. They got him in a rundown. Stargell chasing Valentine towards second. Severus will make the tag. Oh, a crazy mixed up play, but we came out of it pretty good. Parker fell down as he initially broke for the ball. But he was able to get up in time and get to where the ball came down on the warning track. Then he got the glove on it, bobbled the ball, it fell to the track. Valentine, without looking, went around first base and then realized that Cromarty, who was a bit confused, stopped at second. So it is a uh, an error charged on Parker, allowing Valentine to reach first. And then what was it, 9-4-3-6? 9-4-3-6 was the put out. All right, the batter now, Tony Perez. Outside, ball one. It was funny, Dave was down, then he was up, he was all right, then he dropped it, and he got it back in, then we got the out. All's well that ends well. The only thing the Expos got out of it is Joe Marty got a base. 2-1, Montreal leads, top of the sixth. Ball 11, set the 1-0 pitch, and foul back. Perez, their number five hitter, Gary Carter, is on deck. Pirates and the Expos again tomorrow afternoon here at Three Rivers. Game time, 2.15. Then on Sunday afternoon, third game of the set, a 105 encounter with Montreal. and set, check of the runner, 1-1 one, one pitch, ground ball foul outside of third, between the bag and the coaching box, 1-2. and two. Oh, 
Warren Cromartie at second base with one away. That's Lila and double look back at the runner. One, two, pitch, swung out of ground ball. Backhanded by Garner at the line. Good stop, strong throw, got him. Oh, and above average major league play right there. And a sharply hit ball down the third base line. Garner making the backhanded stop right at the line and the long throw. So two away. Well, that was not an easy chance either because the position of his hands landing by the time he got the ball, he really had to get rid of it in a hurry and had to have something on it besides and boy, he handled it so well. It just looked like it turned his hands inside out a little bit and then to recover and make that good throw, that's a big play because if it goes by, a run is in and a double for Perez. Yes, indeed. Jerry Carter steps in, takes a strike. Carter robbed of an extra base hit on a good running grab by Moreno in the second and Carter homered. In the fifth, Montreal leading 2-1. to one. Ed Ott has homered for the Pirates. We're in the top of the sixth. Cromarty at second, two down, one strike pitch, ground, no, foul ball, caught Carter in the batter's box. And he's walking it off. Took quite a shot off of a foot. No ball, two strikes. Pirates defensively, Garner at third, Tavares the shortstop, Rennie Stennis at second, Willie Stargell at first. Stargell playing a couple of extra steps off the line, Stennis cheating towards the second base bag. They're playing Carter around towards left with Bill Robinson in left field, Moreno towards the gap in left center, and Dave Parker playing over into the power alley in right center. Here's the stretch by Burt, the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball down low. One ball, two strikes. Expos have four hits, and they picked up their two runs in the fifth inning. Carter Shaw, home run, and then Dawson, a two-out single, driving in Larry Parrish. Pirate run, bottom of the fifth on Ed Ott. First home run of the year. Wylevin said, one, two, pitch, struck him out. Breaking pitch down and away. Third strikeout for Burt. And that's all, Montreal. No runs, uh, no hits, two errors. One left after five and a half. It's the Expos, two. And the Pirates, one. Swings and drives, one to left. Way back. Going, going, and gone. A long home run by Robbie. There's nothing else in baseball like one of those round trippers. And this year, there's more power than ever in those bucko bats. Now you can cash in on pirate power at the plate. For a chance to win tickets to a pirate game and a brand new color TV, just send your name and address to Pirate Home Run Hitters, Post Office Box 225, Pittsburgh 15230. Every time a pirate clouts a four-bagger, we'll give away a pair of tickets to an upcoming pirate game to some lucky listener. If it's a grand slam homer, we'll award pirate tickets and a brand new color TV. Every pirate home run means another winner. So get your card in early to Pirate Home Run Hitters, Post Office Box 225, Pittsburgh 15230. One winner for household, entry deadline September 21st, 1979. Get behind those powerful bucko bats and root for the long ball. Your pirate home run hitters here on your pirate station. Well, in honor of Burt Weiland's 28th birthday and the rebirth of a new baseball season from the Beatles' great white album... So you say it's your birthday. Well, Fly Lemon says it's my birthday, too. We're going to have a good time. Two to one, bottom of the sixth inning, Montreal League. Action coming your way from Three River Stadium. Curtain has gone up on this 1979 season. the top of the Pittsburgh batting order. Ed Ott is uh, homered this afternoon. He now has 17 Major League home runs. It's his first Major League home run off Steve Rogers. Frank Tavares will lead off the bottom of the sixth.
Frank is one for two at a base hit. Wiped the base in the first inning and a foul tip strike one. Dave Pallone, the home plate umpire, slaps the hand indicating the foul ball. Tavares, Moreno, and Parker, first three in the Pirate batting order here in the sixth. Tavares swings again the foul tip and it's 0 and 2. Rogers ready, the 0 2 pitch. Tavares swings and a foul ball. the broadcast this afternoon. We'll have our post-game pirates. We'll check the scoreboard. Look at the other games. There are two in the American League scheduled. Only one going to be played this afternoon. Check the games from tonight. And of course, recap the action of this opening day for you. And tomorrow we're on the air at 2 o'clock with the game two of the season. 0-2 pitch. Ground ball through the right side. Tavares is 2 for 3. Gotten lead off single down three of the first six innings. And it'll bring up Omar Moreno. Bucks are down a run. We'll see if Chuck has Omar button him over. Now Tanner's going to come out and have a word with Omar. Not unusual to see Chuck have this kind of conversation with a hitter if for no other reason than to get the other team wondering. Omar one for two. Had a base hit to left field in the fourth inning. Parrish is up to third. Shortstop fire. Second baseman Scott are a bit closer than double play depth. And they would have to be with Omar in the batter's box. Tavares at first. Tavares, when he ran on uh, Rogers in the first inning, went on the first pitch. Not going. Moreno shows butt, takes high ball one. So this head-to-head confrontation between Rogers and Moreno has a sidebar, and that's Tavares at first base. Montreal bullpen is working. Right-hander and left-hander. Go to first base. That would be my question about this Montreal club. Left-hander Woody Fryman. Right-hander Flaggett like Delia Sosa. Two-one Montreal leads last of the sixth. Ball is bunted third base side. Terrace will have to go to first base. Second baseman Scott covering the sacrifice five to four. Pirates trying to manufacture a run here in the bottom of the sixth inning and tie the ball game up. Here's Dave Parker stepping in. He's 0 for 2. Has struck out and slide out. Montreal got two in the top of the fifth. They had odd homered with nobody out on the bottom of the fifth. They were trailing by a run, but now have got that tying run at second base. Two-time National League batting champion. Last year's most valuable player, Dave Parker, facing Steve Rogers. Lefty against righty. Parker takes a let-up. High ball one. I like to throw Parker's stuff down and in. And if possible, run the fastball away. And they like to change speeds on him. A couple of years ago, that off speed stuff gave him some problems, but he's learned to adjust to that. Plus, the inside pitch very well the last couple of years, accounting for the batting championships. 1 0 pitch, swung out and fouled off to the left, 1 and 1. Single is now at second base after Moreno sacrificed bunt. Turning and throwing to second base. Fire cutting in behind Tavares. Frank got back in time. Marker batting in the number three spot. This year, Stigel hitting fourth. You recall a year ago, Chuck Tanner had Bill Robinson fourth and Stigel fifth, but then during that 78 campaign, flip flopped him back the other way.
Here's the stretch. 1-1 one, one pitch. Foul back. 1-2. and two. Dave Parker likes to say he's just a big old country boy. Knee injury changed Dave's life around. Might have been a football player with a knee injury in his senior year in high school in Cincinnati. Went to baseball, and as he said, it might have been a blessing in disguise. One-two pitch, Parker strikes out. There, Rogers ran that fastball away. Six strikeouts, two away. Here's Stargell. Stargell one for two, had a base hit in the fourth inning. Tavera is down to second. Montreal leading by a run in the bottom of the sixth inning. Rogers set to pitch to Stargell, swung on and popped up left field, third base side, foul territory. Parrish and Spire over. Parrish makes the catch in foul territory. Pirates in the sixth, no runs, one hit, one man left on after six innings of play. It's Montreal two, and our Bucko is one. Updating the news, the U.S. economy continues to show strength as the latest national unemployment rate comes in at 5.7% for the month of March, the same as February. An economic slowdown is reflected in rising unemployment. Federal mediators are sitting in with representatives of the Teamsters Union and the trucking industry holding contract talks in Washington. The two sides are reportedly still about 25 cents an hour apart on wages. The head of the Pennsylvania service station operator says President Carter's action in decontrolling domestic oil prices plays into the hands of oil companies. Pittsburgh postal officials are probing reports. One or more postal employees at the main post office on Grant Street may have stolen an unknown amount of cash from letters addressed to charities. The weather outlook very windy, cold the rest of the day. Some snow flurries tonight, diminishing winds, temperatures dropping down to 22. Sunny and warmer tomorrow, looking for a high of 45. More news following Pirate Baseball. John Hadar, KDKA News. Well, after six innings of play, the Expos two runs on four hits. Jerry Carter, a home run for Montreal. Pirates one run on six hits. Pirate catcher Ed Ott with a solo home run on the fifth inning. So we're set for the seventh, and Milo back in to tell you about it. All right, Lanny, we're set to go, and it's a tough, tight ball game here now. The Bucks have seen a couple of chances go by the board in the first inning and again in the sixth. As a result, the Expos maintain the two-to-one advantage. Larry Parrish leading it off. He's two for two, had a single in the third and another single in the fifth. He scored their second run. Bert Blylevin and Steve Rogers, starting right-handers, both still in on the action. Here's the pitch to Parrish. Hit him on the fist, but he's still strong enough to get it out to center field. That's where Moreno will make the play. So they get Parrish for the first time today after collecting two for two. That'll bring up their shortstop, Chris Meyer. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third inning. In the fifth, Rennie Stennett robbed him of a hit, going way toward the right field foul line, throwing off balance against the grain to Blylevin, who covered it. It was a tremendous play. And now he'll step in here 0 for 2. Pitcher Rogers will be next. Bathed in bright sunshine here today, and if you're in that sun, it makes it feel a little better. Good crowd on hand, considering the fact that when the folks got up this morning, it was a bit nippy in Pittsburgh. These folks here today are baseball fans deluxe. Bundled up and watching their buckos. Two to one Montreal, seventh inning. Chris Fire waiting for Blylevin. The Dutchman brings it. Look out, almost nipped him in the shoulder, and it's ball one. Tomorrow, Don Robinson, last year's right-hand Sporting News Rookie of the Year pitcher, will go against the Expos. Bruce Keeson gets the nod on Sunday. Fouled off, way down the right side. One ball and one strike. A lot crammed into an opening weekend, not only the ball games, but all the promotions along with it. Buck Brass in the front office trying to make it fun for you to be here. Fly ball right center. It's slicing away from Moreno. Parker will make the play in right center. And it's two down. That ball really had a banana in the end of it. So Parker over to make the catch on the slicing fly ball to right center and brings up their pitcher, Rogers. 
In the third inning, he struck out, and then in the fifth, he had a sizzling line drive that was taking off. And Stunnett reached high and made his second great play in a row to take a hit away from Rogers. Nobody on, two down. Wyle Evans pitch, got it by him. He tried to pull the bat back and it hit it for a foul strike. Oh, and one to Rogers, leadoff batter and center fielder Dawson would be next. Here's the pitch. Steve Reich on the inside corner, really rode it in on that inside corner with good velocity. Jumps out in front of his mound opponent with two strikes. Here's the pitch. Stayed high with a breaking ball, and it's one and two. Montreal Expos under their manager, Dick Williams, and they are confident that this is going to be their best year ever. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a foul off to the right, holding at one and two. And the back of our broadcasting booth certainly filled with the radio and TV side, the sponsors, the folks who make it all possible for you to hear the game. Ever grateful we are. Here's the pitch. Off speed, up high. Two and two. Two two with two out and nobody on. Wyland has the sign from the otter. Two two pitch. Swinging foul way upstairs on the right side. Almost gets into our club level. General Manager Pete Peterson with his family and guests over in the general manager's box. New Vice President in charge of promotion, publicity, and sales, Jack Schrum with the group in. There's a bouncer through the right side, a base hit. Had him two strikes and let him get off the hook. Stargell tried to go to his right to flag it off, but it was by him and into right field, and Parker quickly got over near the line to hold him to a single. That is hit number five off fly 11, and the bat boy goes down with a warm-up jacket for Rogers, and that'll bring up their center fielder and leadoff batter, Andre Dawson, who bounced out in the first inning to Stargell. Third inning, Garner threw him out. Then in the fifth inning, he got a big two-out hit, a single, to draw in Parrish, and that's the run that has them in front right now. They got a homer out of Carter to start that fifth inning. The Bucks' only run came on an Ed Ott home run. That was in the bottom of the fifth. All the scoring took place in the fifth inning on both sides. Two runs, five hits, exposed. Pirates, one run, six hits. Stretching and delivering to Dawson. Hit him on the fifth, popped him foul out of play. Back here to the left side. Well, uh, interestingly enough, Andre Dawson is the sixth different leadoff batter the Expos have had in the last six years. 74, Ron Hunt, 75, Tony Scott. 76, Pepe Mangual, 77, Dave Cash. Last year they started with Ellis Valentine, and today it's Dawson. <laughs> so the revolving chairs in that leadoff spot as they've tried to build their expansion team into a contender, and they've done it now. The stretch pitch to Dawson. Swings and sends a high pop right side. Stargell moving over. Will it come back for him? It does. He's there, and he has it. Right down in front of the box seat railing. He had to stay with it. It was very high. Got up into that win, but Captain Willie, the old veteran, made the play. No runs and one hit, no errors, and the pitcher, Rogers, who had the base hit, was left on. So now it's seventh inning stretch time. How about it? Everybody getting up here at the ballpark. You get up at home. Let's stretch some hits and some runs out of these bucko bats. Need to go get them back. In the middle of the seventh, Expos 2, Pirates 1. You know, it takes a team effort to be a winner. The Pirates know that, and so does Zenith. That's why Zenith's new three system is such a winner. A total breakthrough in color TV technology. It includes System 3's new tri-focus picture tube with its unique EFL electron gun that uses three focusing actions instead of one. And Zenith's fantastic new Triple Plus chassis that's specially designed to run cooler and have fewer interconnections where trouble can start. Plus 100% modular design. A grouping of eight separate modules that means that your set may never have to leave your house for service because every part is on a home replacement module. And it's all teamed with Zenith's famous automatic color sentry. What a team! See System 3, the best performing, most reliable color TV in Zenith history at your nearby Zenith dealer today. Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. At the crowd on an opening day at Three Rivers, still standing for their seventh inning stretch. Trying to get their buckos going. The song you hear in the background, I'm sure, is recognizable and familiar to you. It's the Steelers' song. 
reminding the fans, as the message board does, that tomorrow is our salute to the world champion Steelers. Ceremonies before the game, also some fun with the Steelers and the Bucks having a hitting contest. So more fun at Three Rivers for you tomorrow. Now the crowd's settling down. The Bucks need a run to get back. They need two to go in front. Pirates have not led in this game. And it'll be Bill Robinson, Rennie Stenner, and Ed Ott as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Robinson has bounced to third, and he's hit into a force play to the shortstop. Robinson had started out now working on the batting glove a little bit. He's got that pine tie rag that's got all that stuff on it. Makes your hands stick to the bat. And today you might have trouble getting the bat out of your hand. Boy, it is nippy for those hitters today. Grabbing onto that bat handle. And when a runner runs that ball in on your fist, boy, it really stings in this kind of an afternoon. Hot dog wrappers by the thousands flying around here. Wind whirling at Three Rivers. Two home runs, one by Carter, one by Ott. Expos lead two to one. Pitch upstairs from Rogers. One ball and no strike. Good to see Duffy Dyer and Kenny Maka. They are now members of the Expos, of course, but... Top notch guys. There's a ball, and it is two and zero. Kenny, of course, from Pittsburgh, and Duffy Dyer's family was coming in from Arizona to see the series, and then I guess go home to Montreal for the season with the Duff. Two balls and no strikes. Rogers behind Robbie. Here's the pitch. Strike call right down the middle, and it's two and one. Rennie Stennett on deck to the right. Tavares has had two of the six pirate hits. Moreno won, Stargell won, Ott won, that was a homer, and Blylevin won, the pitch. Swing and a miss and a slider. Two balls and two strikes. Two and two as Robinson leads it off, trying to get something going in the Pirate seventh. Expos leading by a run. Bucks about hit him. Bucks have made two errors, but did not figure in the two-run inning for Montreal. Bouncer foul off to the third side. Skips into the front box and a youngster. Holds it up proudly and well he should. He earned it. Two balls and two strikes. Broadcast time tomorrow will be 2 o'clock with the warm-up man. Swing and a miss and he struck him out. That is strikeout number seven for Rogers. He brought that K job with him today. He struck out seven. That'll bring up second baseman Rennie Stunnett. Bounced to short in the second inning. Fifth inning he struck out swinging. Well, Ronnie Stennett looking for his first hit of the young season. This is the opener for both clubs. And Rogers delivering to Rennie, and it is inside corner at the letters. Rennie had backed away, thought it was a ball. Umpire threw up the right hand. Rennie not particularly happy with the call. And the crowd starting the chant here of let's go, Buck. Fouled up to the right side, going to make the upper deck. So Rogers quickly out in front of Rennie. Rennie, by the way, has made two excellent plays in this game at second base. Omar Marino made a fabulous running catch in the second inning on Carter in deep right center. Now, look at this. <laughs> boy, oh boy. I'll tell you one thing. We know the concession people are doing a business. Look at the empty Raptors on the field. <laughs> and they're blowing them all in toward the dugouts down here behind home plate. Here's the 0-2 pitch. High inside, 1-2. and two. One out and nobody on. Robinson started the inning by striking out. Now the one-two pitch from Rogers to Stennett. Swinging, pops it right side. It's going to hold up for Valentine. He'll come in about eight or ten steps, make the play, and it's two down. Two away, and the Pirates seven brings up Ed Ott, who will get a welcome here. He hit the home run the last time up. up in the second got him, but in the fifth, he hit one over the right center field fence. Ed Ott with his one for two, the pop up in the second got him, but in the fifth, he hit one over the right center field fence. That's the only run the Bucks have been able to produce here today, trailing two to one. Steve Rogers and Blylevin locked up in a pitcher's duel on opening day. Low outside with his sinker and it's ball one. 
Roger's a fierce competitor, and he has come along. One of the members of their farm system that they brought along to start him, and he's a good one. The pitch. Swinging, fly ball, left center, going to drop. Base hit. Left fielder Camardi will play it on the first bounce. Ott is two for three. That's seven hits for the Pirates. Going to get a runner, I believe. For Ed Ott, it'll be Matt Alexander. Chuck Tanner going to try to steal something here. So Ed Ott will be lifted for the pinch runner. Ed Ott getting the single. Has been replaced by the pinch runner, Matt Alexander, who was the 25th man to make the 25-man team Wednesday morning when we left Florida. He has excellent speed. Got to see if we can manufacture something here with Garner, the third baseman, 0 for 2. The pitch. Strike called inside corner between the knees and the belt. If Garner could get him around the third, you might see us go to the bench again because Enrique Romo and Kent Tacovi are listening in the pirate bullpen down in the left field corner. Inning number seven. Tying runs aboard. Alexander has got that front foot out on the artificial surface. Pitch out. They're thinking about him. One ball, one strike. Expos two. Pirates one. Pirates saw opportunity knock twice and failed to answer. Throw over. Just barely missed him. Boy, that was close because Alexander was leaning. And then delayed a little getting back, and it was close at first base. One ball, one strike on Garner. Drove the ball deep in the fifth inning to right, but Valentine made a good play, racing back to the track. Runner fakes a break, doesn't go. Throw to first, he's back. He might have been going on that pitch, but he caught his spike or his uh, ankle in, in the uh, seam between the dirt portion of that infield and the artificial surface. So Al Manchak helps him with his cap and gets him back toward the base. As we've mentioned before, 2-1 and one is a, seems to me to be a favorite pitch of Chuck Tanner's to run on. All right, they'll take a good look at him here. They pitched out twice. They might be reluctant to do it here. I would think they would be. He's out. He's picked off at first. Alexander can't believe it, and neither can Al Manchak. First base umpires called two of those today, one on Moreno in the fourth, and this one here. So, the pinch runner picked off, according to the first base umpire, that is. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. We have played seven. It is still the Expos two, and the Pirates one. Well, we're going to have a new pitcher, Romo, and we'll have a new catcher, and I'm sure it'll be Nicosia. He has not come down yet, but Lanat is out warming up, and I think it will be Steve. You know, this coming Sunday, the Pirates will pay tribute to two of their all-time great stars, Dave Parker and Willie Stargell. Pre-game ceremonies, the Cobra and Captain Willie will be presented with the many awards they won in 78, such as the batting title, Gold Glove Award, the Most Valuable Player Award for Dave, and Willie's Comeback Player of the Year, and the Fred Hutchinson Award. All fans attending Sunday's game will be given a suitable for framing 8x10 color photo of Dave and Willie free. So don't you miss it. Get your free photo of Dave Parker and Willie Stargell this Sunday, April the 8th. Game time is 105. So Bert Blylevin, pitch 
incredibly here, Lanny, and wouldn't have to stretch the imagination once just to have gotten him a run in the first or in the... See what the other inning was there. That was in the sixth inning when we had Tavares down to second with only one out and couldn't get him home. Had him a third in the first with one out and couldn't get him in. One of those in, and Birch probably still in with a tie game. Well, he appeared to make a mistake on Carter on a 2-1 pitch, and uh, make a mistake on a hitter like Carter, he'll take it, Dave. Fly 11 in the seven innings, walked a couple, uh, had three strikeouts. Uh, so, not a bad uh, outing statistically, and uh, we'll be interested to see what Bird has to say about it after we talk to him later. By the way, Milo, with Nikosha catching and Romo pitching, the umpire has given the straight up and down side. So, where you might expect Nikosha to hit ninth, apparently Nikosha's going to bat seven, and uh, Romo's going to bat eight, which means we'd probably get a pinch hitter for Enrique, then when the Pirates bat in the bottom of the eighth. And, of course, that's the reason that Jackson and Tocolby are continuing to throw now in the Pirate bullpen. Romo, the screwball artist, who throws a lot of pitches, opens up with a scrooge to the left-hand batting Rodney Scott, who has walked, bounced out twice. He's 0 for 2. Rodney Scott starting at second for them today and batting in the 2-hole. Fly 11 doesn't have to hang his head over this opening day assignment. He pitched well. All right, Romo ready. Here's the pitch. Down low, and it's ball two. Romo wants a different baseball. Cromartie's on deck, and it'll be Valentine. Inning number eight. Expos at bat. Montreal leading two to one. Fans first look at Romo. Shakes off a sign. Now he's ready. The 2-0 pitch. Got that one. Oh, he didn't get the call, and it's 3-0. Romo, who pitched the last two years with Seattle in the American League, had pitched several years before that in the Mexican League. Evidently, something got uh, thrown onto the field, and the plate umpire wants the third base umpire to chase it down and get it off the field, and he has done that now. Three balls and no strikes. Left-hand batter waiting, and Romo ready to bring the 3-0, and it is ball four. Comes on and walks the first batter with four pitches. That's the third walk given up by a pirate pitcher here today, and that'll bring up left fielder Warren Cromartie, hit into a double play in the opening inning. In the fourth inning, fly out to center. Sixth inning reached on a shortstop error. Dick Williams, the manager of the Expos, has come out. He's had a word with the home plate umpire Dave Pallone, and now Pallone is uh, going to convey some kind of message to Enrique Romo. Well, I thought the way he went out uh, that maybe he was talking about uh, putting his hand up to his mouth, but on this kind of a day, they get permission for that. Now, apparently, he was wearing a white uh, batting glove under his fielder's glove. And uh, he has been asked to take it off, and he's done so. All right. Cromartie now is up in there. He's 0 for 3 today. Scott is at first base, and he has a big lead. He's really stretched out. Throw over, and he got back in time. Romo working on the mound. The bullpen is busy with the veteran lefty Grant Jackson and last year's premier reliever of the Bucks, Kent Tocovey. Fly 11 gone, and now Romo working, and that is a strike. Got it across the letters. and one. Valentine will be next. Expo's got a pair in the fifth. Pirates answered with one. It's still two to one Montreal. Inning number eight at the moment. Scott's got a big lead. Boy, he's really got that lead. Takes a break to go. Doesn't go. Cromarty showed bunt and didn't go after it. The count is even at a ball and a strike. One and one. Opening day. The Pirates hosting Montreal. The Expos will be here tomorrow and again on Sunday. Then we go to Philly. Next Thursday night, your first night game of the year here. The Cardinals come in for a long weekend. Then after that, the Phillies will be here. One ball, one strike. Got to check that runner, boy. He is flirting over there. Get that lead foot way out, and he takes such a spread out stance as he stands there. You wonder how he can really get going, but he's going, and the throw will be late. It's a stolen base. Strong throw by Steve Nicosia, but uh, Scott had a big jump, and plus Romo was throwing an off-speed breaking pitch, and that was tough for Steve to try to cut him down. 
no doubt about it. Uh, he stole that one clearly on Romo, and as you pointed out, Steve made the good throw. But it's tough when you're given that advantage. The runner is going to beat you there more times than not, no matter how good that throw is. So that pitcher's got to hold him. Two and one the count. Tap swing foul right side over toward the photographer's booth and bounces away. Ozzy Virgil, their first base coach, will retrieve it. Ozzy, by the way, has a son catching in the Philadelphia Philly organization. He got some power too. He's home run hitter. Two balls, two strikes. Runner at second. Montreal, of course, looking for insurance. They're leading two to one as they bat in the top of the eighth inning at Three Rivers. Now, Nicosia and Romo having trouble getting together here. It might be that they're not quite clear on the indicator. Because the walk and the stolen base putting the runner into second. And Steve did the right thing. Don't let him cross you up here. Let that man get over to third the easy way. He's already at second with nobody out. Stretch pitch on the way, and it's inside. Three balls, two strikes. Romo having trouble with his radar system here. So we're due a payoff pitch. Cromarty, left-hand batter waiting. Romo looks, brings it. Swing and a miss. There is that flutter ball, and he struck him out. First strikeout for Romo. Fourth strikeout of an expo in the game. And it brings up Valentine. Captain Willie coming in to say something to Romo. Could be a situation where you wouldn't want to give Valentine anything good to hit. You might throw him pitches, but uh, you walk him. Perez do next, you'd set up a double play. And they've talked it over. Romo worked the first man he faced, Scott. And he is down at second with the walk and the stolen base. Camardi fanning to make it one away. Now here's Valentine. He's 0 for 2. Walked in the fourth inning. Here's the pitch. Just outside with a breaking ball. We got a break on Valentine in the sixth because he had a fly ball back in the warning track and right Parker had slipped. When he got back to it, he caught it but then dropped it. Valentine was confused on the play. We were able to get him in a rundown between first and second. The big play at the time because it really helped Blylevin get out of what could have been a troublesome inning. Two errors behind him in the inning, but they did not score against the Dutchman in that frame. Now Romo steps back, bluffs the throw to Stennett, but no throw back, obviously, because the runner wasn't that far away. One ball, no strikes on the right fielder, Valentine. He's flied out, walked, stolen the base, and reached on an error. Inside backs him out of there. Two balls and no strikes. Windblown Three Rivers on a Friday, April 6, 1979 opener. Carter is homered for Montreal. Head out is homered for the Bucks. Expos leading in a two-to-one game. The pitch. Backs him out of there again, and it's three balls and no strike. Yeah, I think we were right. I think that was the plan. Indeed. On the breaking pitch that was not on the outside corner was away. Valentine held up, tried to get him to chase that pitch inside. Get him to hit that pitch if he will, because that's not his pitch. But if he takes it for a ball, don't worry about it. Don't give him a fat one here either. The big guy will be swinging, and it's down low. He walked in. So that's one of those unintentional, intentional. Two on. Second walk of the inning for Romo. Four walks to the Expos in the game with a strikeout in between. And here is tough Tony. Tony Perez. He's 0 for 3. Fly to Sutter, struck out swinging, sixth inning. Well, Garner made a marvelous play on him way behind third. One of the reasons you don't make it an intentional walk is you got a guy like Perez waiting in the wings. You'd like to get Valentine if you can get him to chase a bad pitch, but with Perez batting next, you got to be careful. Yeah, and don't ruffle Tony's feathers either. <laughs> Saying you got to walk him to pitch to Tony. Here's the pitch to Perez, way inside, almost took off a kneecap. Romo is wilder than a March Hare here, and out to talk to him is Steve Nicosia, the rookie catcher. Oh, Steve Nicosia, his first day in a big league uniform on opening day, along with Eddie Whitson and Dale Barra, has had his conference with Romo, comes back in to give the sign. Scott's at second, Valentine at first, walks, put them both there. 
One down, eighth inning. Romo trying to keep them from insuring themselves further. And a bouncer third. Geiner will come to the bag. Out. Fire to first. Out a double play. That's it. How about that? We're getting out of a full-blown mess. Second fire a double play. Geiner unassisted to force Scott coming over. Then firing to first to get Perez. So the pitching to Valentine did pay off. And they get the double play ball on Perez. No runs and no hits. No errors. A couple of walks. Double play, one left. Middle of the eighth. Exposed to Pirates one. KBKA Radio. Jack Bogus? Keeps you entertained in the morning when you're hitting all the potholes. He comes across more like a next door neighbor than a um, radio announcer. I like to see those hot talks. He turns a gloomy day into a bright one. You get all the traffic information. He's the one I listen to when my alarm goes off in the morning. I have a cat, and I like cats, and he's like. He's our kind of man! Pittsburgh is what we're all about! Jack Hi, this is Steve Blass. I'll be right where you are on Saturday. Enjoying the pirate game. Let's talk after the game. What were the good and bad plays? Who had the hot bat and why? How was the pitching staff? I want to hear from you about all of that. So on Saturday, stay tuned after Pirate Baseball and we can all talk. Right here on KDKA Radio 1020. KDKA Radio. Pittsburgh is what we're all about. Okay, Milo got a change. Tommy Hutton's at first base for Montreal replacing Tony Perez. Well, the Pirate giveaway days keep on coming. Next Saturday, April 14th, a week from tomorrow, is batting helmet day. All you kids 14 and under who attend the game will be given absolutely free and authentic replica of the same batting helmet worn by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Comes in the official Pirate colors, gold and black, at all kids attending the Pirate St. Louis game. April 14th, we'll get one free. Don't you miss it. Remember that same day, Captain Dynamite will blow himself up at second base. Geiner leading it off against Rogers fouls off the first pitch as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. The change at first, Hutton for Perez, is the only change by Dick Williams. Geiner's 0 for 2. Steve Rogers working with a one-run advantage in the eighth. Here's the pitch. Strike called outside corner, got scraps in a hole 0 and 2. Mike Easler will be the pinch hitter for Romo. He's already on deck. Rogers rocking, delivering, swinging, hit him on the fist, popped it, foul over here to the left, it'll be into the seats out of play. Milo's talking about this Montreal ball club, if, I think if there's a question I'd ask right off the bat would be their bullpen, because they got good starting pitching in Rogers, Grimsley, Lee, Schatzeter, Scott Sanderson, but uh, you have to wonder, their bullpen now, they're warming up Woody Fryman and Elias Sosa. All right, Geiner in a hole, 0-2, Rogers, ready to work. Kicks and he fires, and a swing and a foul at a high outside pitch. Rode it up to the right side, up underneath the Allegheny Club. For tomorrow, all the folks over there will be having a little get-together after the game. We're going to go, aren't we? Yes, we are. It's 5.30, 8 o'clock. No ball, two strike count the pitch. Swinging, line drive, hit the right center. The ball's going to... Pitch to Garner, Scraps followed it away. It was a good pitch by Rogers, and Phil was able to battle it off, and he followed it away. Then he missed with that next 0 2 pitch, and Scraps, uh, as we like to point out, likes to attack the ball and drive it to the opposite power alley, did so right there. Mike Easler, who won the AAA batting title in the International League, playing for our Columbus Clippers last year. Then he was purchased by the Red Sox, and we liked him so much, we traded for him to get him back. So here he is, a chance to pay a dividend on opening day. Geiner carrying the mail at second. 
He's the tying run. Buck Steve to get him home. Eighth inning, two to one, Montreal. Strike called outside corner at the knees. Frank Tavares, top man in the order, due up next. Geiner at second with a leadoff double. Nobody out. Rogers studying the sign, and he has it. Stretches to the belt, checks Garner. Comes to the plate, outside. One ball, one strike. Easler has some power, 18 home runs in AAA a year ago. He's won two minor league batting titles. He was having a good spring with the Red Sox before we traded for him. Hit a home run closing day against the White Sox in Florida. And he'd like to deliver here on opening day, you know that. Because he's batting with a tying run in scoring position in the person of Phil Garner. And here is the 1-1 pitch. Swinging a high bouncer along the right side, Hutton over. He'll flip to Rogers. They get him, but the bounce out does get Garner over. He's only 90 feet away now. Score that last one, 3-1. to one. Hutton to Rogers. It was a high chap that hung up in the air. No chance to do anything but flip and get him. Garner is now at third. Frank Tavares could be lifted. Dale Barra is coming out of the dugout talking with Chuck Tanner. Now, if that were to take place, you'd probably see Dale stay in the game play third. I think Milner's going to bat. Left-handed batter Milner. All right. But Dale would be ready and go in to play the infield. He'd play third with that hamstring still not fully well, and uh, Garner would probably play shortstop. Interesting, too. Uh, if they went to their bullpen and brought Freeman on, a left-handed a pitch to Milner, and then, and then you'd come back with Robbie Lee Lacey. So you talk about having a bench. Chuck's got some people there that he can make these kind of moves. Jim Brewer, their pitching coach, is out to talk to Rogers. They've got a full-blown powwow going on out there. Milner, who did such a great job for us a year ago, really did. He played first base, the outfield, did a good job off the bench, hit two grand slams for us last year. And as you heard Chuck Tanner talk before the game on the leadoff, this is the best bench he has had in nine years of managing in the big league. By the way, I don't think this is a slam at uh, Frankie. You know, I think it's a situation where you want a fly ball hitter. Tavares is more of a ground ball type of line drive hitter. So Milner's the choice here in this situation. Absolutely right about that. And you're trying to get that tying run in and hang on for dear life on opening day at home, trailing by a run. Infield up, the pitch, and a bouncer right side. It's bobbled. But he throws in time. Scott bobbled the ball. It kind of jumped up in his hands, dropped, then he grabbed it. Milner is out to make it two away, and that puts it up to Omar Moreno. Hit the ball in a high chopper to second. Rodney Scott had a little trouble with it. Then when he did recapture it, he looked to third. Good thing that Garner didn't gamble because he'd have been a dead duck. Here is Moreno, one for two, singled in the fourth, sacrificed in the sixth. It's the third time today that the Bucks have had a chance to score and so far have not been able to penetrate. The only run coming on the Ed Ott homer to right center in the fifth inning. So it's up to the antelope. Omar Moreno, left-hand batter against the right-hand pitcher, Rogers. He's stretching, looking to third and delivering. Breaking ball, strike called over the outside corner. Started that pitch way outside. When it broke, it nipped the outside corner. And it's a call strike. Parker is on deck. Montreal leading 2-1. to one. Rogers living a charmed life here today. No balls, one strike. Here's the pitch. Down and in. One ball, one strike. In the first inning, Tavares was a third with one out, but Rogers struck out Parker and Stargell. Sixth inning, Tavares was at second with one out. Struck out Parker, got Stargell to pop up. Now in this inning, we had a runner at third with one out. Pinch hitter Milner bounced out, couldn't get him home. Now it's up to Omar. The 1-1 pitch. A high bounce. Out behind second. Spire throws. And doesn't get him. The game is tied.
three, has struck out twice. Throw to first, Moreno back. Tommy Hutton taking the throw. The big high chopper out behind second. Got to give Spire credit. He made a heck of a play. But Moreno's speed was truly the difference. Crowd wanting Moreno to run, of course. The defending not only National League, but Major League base stealing champion from 1978. And we've got a brand new game at 2-2. The Pirates have out-hit them 9-5. Parker struck out in the first, slide out to left field in the fourth, struck out again in the sixth. So, the two-time batting champion, 77 and 78, would like to deliver here and do something about changing the face of that scoreboard. Pirates, two runs, nine hits. Montreal, two runs, five hits. All right, Omar with a lead. Throw over, he's back. Rogers has picked off two would-be base stealers today. He picked off Moreno in the fourth and pinch runner Alexander in the seventh. Stargell would be next, but right now it's up to the Cobra. Got a speed merchant at first base, Omar Moreno. His infield hit got the tying run home. Throw over does not get him. So the fans being treated to a tough, tight ball game on opening day. Right now we're in the eighth inning, not at a two of feet. Looks like somebody had a confetti parade and it all blew on the infield here. The pitch on the way, swinging and fouled over to the right side, back into the seat. Well, you catch one of those today, barehanded, and it's going to sting for a week. You'll feel it all the way down to your elbows. <laughs> feel like you stuck your hand in a snowblower. No balls and one strike. Parker trying to deliver. Moreno with his lead at first base, edging a little. Going. The pitch swung on. Fly ball down the left side, but it's bending foul. Nobody will be able to get there. Parrish made a heck of a try. He must have run 150 feet down the left field line. It dropped in foul ground, of course. Left fielder playing Parker over had no chance to come over and try and get it, so it's no balls and two strikes. Box more years than you can remember. Missing his first opening day in a number of years. Paul's been in the hospital and just couldn't make it today. So, Paulie, our old buddy Paul Kurt, you get out here when the weather gets better. We're looking for you. No balls, two strikes. Runner not going. Up high a ball. The crowd today, 36,141. 36,141. And a brisk, chilly day. A tribute to these fans turning out today. Now the fans with we want a hit. Listen to them. The pitch runner going, swinging a drive to center, but it'll be caught by Dawson about six feet short of the track. The runner was going. Parker lifted the fly ball into center. Dawson just drifted back, made the catch, side retired. Bucks have to settle for the moment for a tie. One run and a couple of hits. Geiner had a leadoff double. Moreno got him home with a high chopper out behind second. No errors and one man left. We played eight innings. We're all tied up here. Expos two, Pirates two. The Arthritis Foundation in Western Pennsylvania chapter has announced that a chart called Home Exercises for Arthritis Patients is now available free of charge. If you have arthritis, these exercises should aid you to do the necessary things to help keep your arthritis under control. The chart graphically shows how to perform the exercises. By following the program on the chart, the patient can follow step by step the exercises fulfilling the need to move about, work with hands and feet, and maintain good breathing habits. While doctors have recognized for a long time that a complete arthritis program includes a regular schedule of exercises, it is still recommended that the patient consult his own physician before starting a new program of exercises. This is Lanny Terry. KDK reminds you that the free chart may be obtained by calling the Arthritis Foundation at 566-1645 or writing the office at 6115 Jenkins Arcade, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15222. The Arthritis Foundation is a member agency of the United Way. We'll check the pirate changes. We'll have to break the stations all around the five-state right here. They 
also identification time on the Pirate Baseball Network. When you get up, you want to know the latest news, sports, and weather. I'm Dave James. Join me along with Ed Chauncey on the Jack Bogut Show tomorrow morning on KDKA Pittsburgh. Changes, new pitcher Kent Sacovey, new shortstop Garner moving over from third, and Dale Barrow will play third base. As Sacovey warms up, I want to remind you fans from the five-state area that you can buy pirate tickets easier than ever now. Just go to one of the 83 selected Murphy store Murphy locations, tell them what games you'd like to see. They'll tell you exactly where your seats will be before you buy your tickets. So remember, for box and reserve seat tickets, visit the Pirate Ticket Office at your nearest Murphy location, including the following. Titusville, PA. Toronto, Ohio. Uniontown, Pennsylvania. The Mart on Elm Road in Warren, Ohio. And Warren, Pennsylvania. So Kent Sokovic, with the great credentials of a 78 season. He was fantastic. And he will be facing Gary Carter. He's our third pitcher following Starter Blylevin, who pitched well enough to win a lot of games. Romo worked the eighth. A little while with a couple of walks, but a double play got him out of it. To Colby, ready to work. He's winding in his first pitch to Carter. Inside, ball one. Inning number nine, we're tied 2-2. Smash to deep short. Geiner bobbled it, picks it up, won't throw. That's an E6. Scrap was playing a couple of steps uh, towards the third base line, so he was in the hole to actually take control of it, but couldn't find the handle. That's the third pirate error. They bring up Parrish, who's had two singles and a fly ball to center. He's two for three. So in this ninth, with the changes, Stargell and Stennett still on the right side. Geiner and Barra on the left. To Colby, the new pitcher. The outfield swings around to the left on Parrish because this big guy pulls about everything but not here because he's going to be bunting in a tie game. And he bunts it foul and it's strike one. Robinson left, Moreno center, Parker right. Nicosia catching. Came on in the eighth inning when... Ed Ott got his second hit. Ott homeward to supply one of our runs today. Then was lifted for a pinch runner, and Nikosha came on to catch. Kyer at first, reaching on the Geiner error. Doesn't take a big lead. To Colby stretching, squared away to bunt his parish, bunts it down the first base side foul, and it's strike two. Now with this big guy up there, let's see if Dick Williams leaves it on. Dick Williams, of course, remembered... I'm sure mostly for his managing of those world champion Oakland A's for a number of years. Perry singled in the third, singled in the fifth, and scored their second run. The Pirates about hit them 9-5, to five, but the score is tied 2-2. Two, two. Now Kent Colby making his first appearance of 78 in the opener here at home. No balls, two strikes. Parrish won't be button here. The pitch. Swings and fouls it off out of play. The Colby did not have a particularly impressive spring, but I think we pointed out sufficiently that he was working on some things, and he was trying to improve his repertoire more than he was bring home impressive Florida stats. And not only working on particular pitches, the sinker and the slider, but also working on different pitches to different hitters, trying some things there. No balls, two strikes, pitch on the way, swings, and he misses on a sinker almost in the dirt. Parrish strikes out. First strikeout for Teak, fifth strikeout of an expo in the game. It'll bring up their shortstop, Chris Fire. Now Willie Stargell wants to have a word with Kent Tacovey. Remember, the game tomorrow starts at 2.15. If you're not able to make it on our salute to the Super Steelers, we'll be on the air at 2 o'clock with the warm-up show, the leadoff man. Sunday game time is 105 on Stargell Parker Day. We'll be on the air at 12.50 on Sunday. All right, the conference between the captain and the peak is over. Spire the batter, he's 0 for 3. The pitch. Slider comes inside, ball one. Spire had a bid for a hit taken away in the fifth on the first of two exceptional plays by Stennett, and he made them back-to-back in the fifth inning. 
Prince fire their shortstop, a right-hand batter. See if they put something on together with him and Carter. Did he go after it? They're asking. Yes, he did. It's a swinging strike. Rogers do next. They've got Tony Salada, a young man they picked up. Uh, well, since a young man, he's been in the game a while. Picked up from uh, California Angels. All right, it's a ball and a strike. Kent Sacobie working in his first inning. He's our third pitcher. Bly Levin worked the first seven. Romo worked the eighth. Throw over to first base. Not close. Expos led two to nothing, two to one. Ots homer cut it in half. Eighth inning. Moreno speed beating out a chopper out behind second. Fire through. Couldn't get him. And while that play was being reeled off, Garner scored from third to tie it. So here we are. 2-2 two, two in the top of the ninth inning. The pitch. Bouncer foul, third base side. Fans reaching across the box seat railing, wanting that souvenir, but it didn't come to him. So a guy jumps out and grabs it. One ball and two strikes. Montreal batting in the ninth. They've seen a two-to-nothing lead disappear. They're involved now in a two-two tie. Kiner at first, reaching on an error. Stayed there as Perry struck out. Now a one-two to Spire. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Two strikeouts for Tacoli. That's going to bring up the pinch hitter. Tell us something about this fellow, will you? Well, we should know a little bit about him. So later in, uh, in 73, he played for our Charleston AAA ball club. Uh, Tecolby was not on that 73 club, so uh, he would not have seen him, but he might have seen him a little bit in that pirate camp of 73. So later, going to be a, a good stick off their bat. He's from Samoa originally, and last year at 223 for the Angels, had one home run and 14 runs batted in. Left-handed stick. Well, then they're going to talk him over, too. Chuck Tanner's out there with the Colby, Stargell, Nicosia, and Vera. In the meantime, Garner and Stennett are talking over near Stennett's position. And with this left-hand batter coming up, the time score came in the eighth for the Bucks. And right now, with Carter at first and two away, the Colby wants to get this guy, of course, not let that top of the order come up here and give his teammates a chance to do it for him in the bottom of the ninth. Pirates two runs, nine hits. Expos two runs, five hits. The Pirates have made three errors, but it didn't help the Expos get their two runs at all. So while the errors look big on the board, they don't reflect in the score for Montreal at all. Now the stretch. Here's the pitch. Outside low, ball one. Kenta Colby in the ninth. After the error committed by Geiner playing short for the first time in the inning. Struck out, Parrish. Fire has just struck out. Now a 1-0 delivery on the way to Soledo, and here it comes. Sends a high fly ball to left. Robinson drifting back, shielding his eyes from a high side. Has it, side retired. So the stage is set for the Bucks to do it in the ninth. So let's go get them, Buckos. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth side. Montreal 2, the Pirates 2. in a personal world of space, comfort, and hushed luxury with a satisfying feel of the road under you and crisp, classic styling around you that says this is something special. And it is Monte Carlo by Chevrolet. Drive one and reward yourself. Think of yourself behind the wheel. Well, a fellow who a year ago was with us all during spring training and then on practice in the last day, we shipped him off to Oakland and he had a heck of a year for those Oakland days, didn't he? Elias Sosa. Yes, he did. Last year of the A's was 8-2 and two. 2.64 ERA. How would you think the way the Oakland A's scampered? Because they got off to a good start last year. But after that, they settled down a little bit. So it's Sosa, their second pitcher. Rogers for uh, Montreal work. Eight innings. He gave up uh, two runs. Nine hits at 
seven strikeouts and did not walk a batter. All right, when Sosa is ready, and he is now, you'll be looking at Star Joe Robinson and Stennett as we go to the bottom of the ninth, wrapped up here in a 2-2 tie. Three Stargell has had one hit. That was a single in the fourth inning. Around the hit, he struck out and popped up. He's leading off in the ninth inning against Elias Sosa. And his pitch on the way is down low, ball one. Bill Robinson on deck. Crowd of over 36,000 on opening day. Here's the pitch. Breaking pitch with something off, takes it for a strike, one and one to Captain Willie. We'd had any kind of break in the weather here today. We'd have had 45 easy. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Ran it up and in. One ball and two strikes. One and two the count as Sosa reads the sign from Carter. Here's the pitch on the way. Swinging low. Look out, foul. I'm telling you something, folks. You can thank goodness that ball hit the bottom of the box seat railing. That had been up a foot. Man, that's why we tell you so often, if you're going to come and sit in those lower seats, you've absolutely got to pay attention every minute. This is not a tea party or a ladies' aid. Line drive hit, right center. The ball will be cut off in the gap and drop. Nigel try for two. The throw. He's going to be out. The umpire checking to see that the ball was held on to by Spire. Spire gambling. When he saw the ball dropped by Dawson, he ran by it. Not Tony Byterone coming out to see if Willie's all right. Willie's getting up and walking away, so he is. But he was trying to get into second and get that go-ahead run in scoring position. But fortunate thing for us is that uh, Valentine got to the ball in a hurry. Good play by their right fielder, and he has a good arm. He's good strong throw to Spire. 9-6 to put out to cut Sargent down to second base. So he'll be credited with a single. Tanner out to pat him on the back saying, don't worry about that, big guy. You were hustling. You were trying to help us win a ball game. Here's a pitch to Robbie upstairs, ball one. Because if the gamble had paid off, well, then he's in scoring position with nobody out. All right, Robinson waiting, the 1-0 from Soto, off speed upstairs, inside, two balls, no strike. somebody been dipping in the Yaki dock here today, evidently, and got a difference of opinion on where maybe their seat ought to be, and the gendarmes have been called in. Here's the 2-0 to Bill Robinson, swinging and lacing it right to the third baseman on a straight line drive, and it's two away. Hit the ball right on the button, but right at Parrish at third. That makes it two away, and it brings up the second baseman, Rennie Stennett. He is 0 for 3 today. Rennie has bounced the short, struck out, swinging, and flied to right. Hitting number nine. Their reliever, Elias Sosa, coming on in relief of Rogers. High inside had to duck under it. Ball one. One ball and no strike. All right, right hander ready, the pitch. Swinging and fouling into our dugout. Almost nip skipper Chuck Tanner. One ball and one strike. Looking up behind the screen today, I think half of Newcastle was here. <laughs> Looked like all the folks we saw in Florida. One ball and one strike on running with nobody on in front of him and two away. Swing sends a high fly ball to right. Valentine will come in about three or four steps. We have extra innings on opening day. No runs, one hit. Sargell out trying to stretch a single to a double. No errors and nobody left. We'll go to the 10th. Montreal, two runs on five hits. The Pirates, two runs on ten hits. Did you ever use crutches or wear a cast because of a broken arm or leg? Do you still remember the glimpses of others showing pity and curiosity? Your broken bones did not change you as a person. And being permanently disabled doesn't change a person either. I'm Dave James. The disabled are people just like all of us. People who have needs and desires. Desires to be able to work and play and be given a chance to prove to themselves and to others that they can make it. Now, your local Easter Seal Society, for many, many years, has been helping the disabled become more useful citizens. People who can work and be an asset to their community. But your help is needed. 
Your help and attitude to accept the disabled as neighbors and friends in your community. KDK Radio urges you to visit your local Easter Seal Society and learn about the programs available to the disabled in your area. Kent Sikalvi will be working in his second inning as we go to the tenth inning. And if you're looking at the top of the Montreal order, that'll be Andre Dawson, Rodney Scott, and Warren Cromarty. So we have really had a tough tight one here, not able to break through. And as a result, we're going to have extra innings on opening day, a bargain to say the least here. Dawson, who will be leading it off, is one for four. He had a big two-out single that drove in a run in the fifth inning. Scott is 0 for 2, but he's walked twice. Cromartie is 0 for 4. So the trio that's going to be starting it here in the 10th inning has one hit among them. San Diego will be at L.A. tonight. Giants at Cincy, and the rundown of the afternoon and night will be yours. Remember, we're in the regular season now. You heard Chuck Tanner on the warm-up today with us, and of course, after every game, Lanny gives you the rundown on the scoreboard and the highlights. Here's the pitch. Low inside a ball to Dawson. Dawson, their center fielder. Remember tomorrow, a 2-15 game, Sunday, 1-0-5. And the 1-0 from the Teak is... Hit him in the middle of the back. Not exactly the way Teak wanted to start it here in extra innings, you know that. Dawson just couldn't roll away. It hit him in the small of the back, evidently. The trainer out to look at him, along with the manager, Dick Williams... So you've got Dawson at first with nobody out in the 10th inning, and he is a threat to be moving. So Sikovi and Nikosia are going to have to really be alert here, and we're going to need somebody in that dugout, Lanny, with some leather lungs to help Steve out because this batter is going to be blocking him. In other words, if he's moving, those guys in the dugout have got to be helping Steve. There he goes. I think Sikovi down through the years has been a pretty good pitcher holding runners on, and uh, he'll give Steve a pretty good shot. All right, here is Rodney Scott. He walked in the opening inning, bounced out a couple times, and in the eighth inning, led off of the walk, stole second. Scott will be looking for the punt here. Bear is already up 25 feet at third. Outfield shallowed up and around toward the left side with him batting, and the first pitch strike called over the outside corner above the knees. No balls and a strike. Inning number 10. Pirates have out hit them 10 to 5, but just weren't able to deliver in a couple of innings where they really had golden opportunities. As a result, we're in the 10th tied 2 to 2. Wylevin pitched very well. Romo had a little trouble, but pitched a scoreless inning. It's now to Colby. Pitch out. Dawson did give a little fake break that he might be going. Boy, Bill Robinson is really playing a shallow left field. Way in and uh, over a couple of extra steps closer to the left field line. Grant Jackson's been joined by Jim Bibby now in the Pirate bullpen. Need somebody ready in case something starts to blow up here. Strike call in the outside corner. He showed butt but never really went after it. One ball and two strikes. So we play all spring, come home for opening day. And to the good loyal fans who showed up in this breezy, windy, chilly weather, 36,000 plus, they've got extra innings to witness. One ball, two strikes. Runner edging but not going, throw over, not close. He could just kind of lobbing it over there. A one ball, two strike count as the Expos bat in the 10th inning. Rodney Scott, the batter. Dawson with good speed at first base. He's faking that going strike. Free call. Outside corner. Scott doesn't like it a little bit. He's jaw to jaw. Dick Williams going to come out now and try to get him away from the plate umpire. The umpire has walked away from him twice. Plate umpire took a lot of abuse right there and not, not throwing him out. Sikoli pitched him away really well. Good pitch. He uh, ran that... Fastball tailed it away in the outside corner. By the way, uh, look credit to this umpiring crew, Dave Pallone, the home plate umpire. They've been thrown into quite a pressure cooker with the regular umpires out. And uh, Mr. Pallone calling balls and strikes. I think he's called a consistent game here today. Somebody 
setting off a cherry bomb or something. Proving once again that brains and trains only rhyme, and he obviously missed it. Throw to first base, not close. Fun is fun, but that ain't funny. Dawson at first is Cromartie Bass. He's 0 for 4, Valentine on deck. Inning number 10. To Colby comes to the stretch, throws to first a little quicker that time, but the runner's back. Dawson stretched out full, getting back to the bag. Steve Rogers, who pitched a good game before he was lifted, picked off a couple of our runners, Moreno and Alexander, so he picked up off a couple of speed merchants, didn't he? All right, to Colby ready again. Throws over that way. Throw, got by Sargell. Going down the right side against the box seat railing. Has to chase it down, and now they've got a runner at second base. Bigger in scoring position in the person of Dawson, and Cromarty is the batter. There's still no count to him. Left-hand swinger. Tacolby delivers to him, and he swings and bounces it right to Stargell. He will flip to Tacolby. It's out at first base. Dawson moves over to third. Score at 3-1. to one. Captain Willie to take makes it two away. And bring up Ellis Valentine, their right fielder, who is 0 for 2. He's walked a couple of times. Pirate pitchers have walked four, struck out seven, hit a batter. We've had errors on Tavares, Parker, Geiner, and Stargell. Up till now, they haven't hurt. The Colby now going to look at a dangerous right-hand hitter. Valentine's a good one. No chance to ease up here. We're in the 10th inning, tied at 2-2. Montreal batting with a runner at third. To Colby stretching, looks to third, delivers. Swing and a miss, and a sinker in the bottom literally dropped out of that sinker ball. Colby struck out a couple in the ninth inning. He has struck out one here in the tenth. Last couple of years, uh, his stock has zoomed as a reliever in this league. Topped it off with 91 appearances last year and 31 saves. Here's the 0-1 pitch. A high chop. Toward short. Third baseman can't flag it down. Barrow wanted to snap and throw and cut. Run scores. That's going to be an error on Vera, and it's the fifth pirate error of the game. And it's 3-2 to two, Montreal. It was a high chop toward short, going toward Garner, but Vera playing third, as he's supposed to do, is supposed to cut in front and make that play. But he never got the ball in his glove. So Hutton will be batting now for the first time. It's a 3-2 to two, Montreal lead. I think it's a play a third baseman's got to make aggressively. I think Dale kind of sat back on it a little bit. All right, this is Tommy Hutton, a left-hand batter, up for the first time. Came on in the eighth, replacing Perez at first. Runner going, throw down, and it's going to be safe because the ball is dropped. A good, strong throw by Nicosia, a little maybe on the third base side. And I think Garner going back to get him and then trying to come with a swipe. Had the ball kicked out of his glove. Yeah, Steve unloaded in a hurry, and it was a good, strong throw, and then Scraps trying to get it from the third base to the second base side of the second, made the dive for it, and everybody's find the handle. All right, it's 3-2 to two Montreal. It'll go as a stolen base. Tommy Hutton is the batter. The left-hand batter with a runner at second and two down. And a strike call. So a hit batsman, an error, and another error have given the Expos a chance to recapture the lead. They've scored the go-ahead run without the benefit of benefit of a single hit in the inning. Those are tough to take. One ball and one strike. Valentine at second. Turning, throwing, runner got back. The timing was there, but just a bit late as Valentine tiptoed back in. A ball and a strike. The Colby stretches, looks back. Kicks and delivers. Swings and he misses. A one ball, two strike count. Hutton is the batter. Playing first base in the late innings. 
Right now, we are in the 10th inning, and Montreal leading for the second time. They led 2 to nothing. Now it's 3 to 2 Expos. Here's the pitch. Fouled it down the right side, kicks off the railing, and it'll go out toward Parker in right field. So, still one ball, two strikes. Pirate errors are as high as the Expo hit total, five. And two errors in this inning finally caught up with the Bucks. Their first three errors did not hurt, but the two in this inning definitely did. All right, one ball, two strikes. To Colby's pitch, outside, two and two. Oh, he's looked good here today. He's got him uh, hitting the ground ball. He's had three strikeouts, and appears to be getting good movement, especially on that uh, fastball he's been running away from left-handed hitter. Really does. Really looks like the Tacoby we saw last year. Bouncer, left side of the mound. Teak has it. Throws. Got him. Side retired. But they have an inning. They get one run without a hit. There were two pirate errors. A hit batsman and one man left. So the Bucks have to do it all over again. We're going to the bottom of the tenth at Three Rivers on opening day. It's now Montreal three and the Pirates two. When you say he but you said a lot of things nobody else can say. When you say he on the big league club this year. Ed Ott, before he left the game, had a homer and a single. Now Nicosia batting for the first time, swings and misses against Sosa. Sosa working in his second inning. Geiner is on deck. Pirates about hit them 10 to 5, but at the moment, trail 3 to 2. Here's the pitch. Strike called inside corner between the letters and the belt. So Nicosia in a hole, 0-2. Expos in front by a run on an unearned run that they picked up in the top of this, the 10th inning. Pitch on the way. Outside, he wasted one. Nick had a notion but laid off. One ball, two strikes. One and two the count as the pitch comes on. Swinging, fly ball, center, but it won't carry as Dawson is there and has it. The ball hit the straightaway center today, gets flattened out a little bit. That'll bring up Garner. Garner started the game at third, moved over to shortstop in the ninth inning. And as we saw in the final spring game in Florida against the White Sox, we saw him play some shortstop for that very reason. Vera would normally be the backup shortstop. Fouled off, back to the right. Vera can play third right now, but can't play short because of that hamstring pull that bothered him the last couple of weeks of spring training. So this is Geiner with Vera due up next. See right call. Nicosia. Side of the inning by flying to center. Geiner now in a hole 0-2. We're in the 10th. Montreal leading 3-2. Here's the pitch. Swinging foul upstairs. 
Out again. Look out below. No balls and two strikes. The Bucks need a base runner. Geiner, who started the eighth with a double and scored what at the time was the tying run to make it 2-2. Now, a popcorn box is blowing out in front of home plate. <laughs> Boy, there's stuff all over here. Maybe the folks that clean this place up could just let the wind blow all night and clean it up. Upstairs at a high pitch, one ball and two strikes. The Expos took advantage of a hit batsman and a couple of errors to score a go-ahead run in the top of this attempt inning. Expos in front for the second time. They're leading three to two. Pirates trying to hang on for dear life here and get somebody on and get the top of the order up. Here's the one-two pitch. Strike three call. Sharp breaking pitch. Outside corner, belt high. First strikeout for Sosa. The eighth strikeout of a Pirate. And here is Barrett. one high and tight of all. One ball, no strikes. Barra battling for the first time. Three to two, Montreal leading. It's Sosa's game to win, by the way. If he can get another out, here's the pitch. Up high, ball two. Now the pitcher is due up next. We have used Milner and Easler. Bear is in the game. Here's the pitch. Fouled off, out of play. Alexander's been used as a pinch runner. Well, Lee Lacey is available. If Bear can reach. Final interference called against their catcher, Gary Carter, so award Dale Barrett first base. Does not count as a time at bat. Interference called on the catcher, Carter. So the tying run is on, and Lee Lacey will be the pinch hitter for Tacoby. Error on the catcher, too, right? Hit batsman E2 on the play to complete it. It is their first error. And a ball low well outside to Lacey. Well, we need an error on the board for the Montreal Expos, and there it goes. Hutton came in to say something to Sosa. Lee Lacey, who was a pinch hitter deluxe for the Dodgers last year, trying to deliver in his first trip as a pirate. Swings, and he misses strike one. Oh, the Bucks can't get it back. It'd be a tough one for Teak to lose. He was throwing very well here today. But he hit one man, and that cost him because a couple of errors followed, and Montreal went in front three to two. The pitch. Top foul back to the right side, and they've got Lacey in a hole, 0 and 2. Lacey batting in the top spot because that's where Tacoby was inserted. No balls, two strikes. Bear at first base, two away, the pitch. Swings and he misses, and the ball game is over. So, Sosa came on and did a job for them. No runs, no hits, no errors, hit bats, make it one error, one error, one man left. Final score in extra innings on opening day at Three Rivers. Montreal Expos three, the Pirates two. Something Wonderful. That's Center Video's Hollywood Home Theater. With something wonderful and entertainment for everybody. Take hockey, basketball, and baseball, for example. In the month ahead on Center Video, you'll see the NHL and NBA playoffs and those glorious Mets. And all because Center Video brings you sports and all-night movies from New York, clear as a crystal, plus those oldie but goodie movies on Channel 22. Then for the youngsters, the wonderful world of Disney with feature film hits such as Gus and Herbie Rides Again. Also during the next few months, you'll see Mel Brooks' high 
high anxiety. Neil Simon's Goodbye Girl. Sylvester Stallone in Fist. The Buddy Holly Story. Semi Tough with Burt Reynolds. And Coming Home with Jane Fonda. Center Video has something for everybody. And something to look forward to. Such as Saturday Night Fever. The Cheap Detective. The Fury. And Omen 2. Call Center Video. 231-7414. If you don't have Center Video, you don't have home entertainment. Call 231-7414. you to see Zenith System 3, the best Zenith color TV ever. And by Con's Wieners. Remember, great meat makes great wieners, and you can depend on Con's. Take it from a guy that knows, there's one thing all pitchers have in common. They dislike being sent to the showers. Now, if your own bathroom is old-fashioned and inconvenient, you probably aren't happy about going to the showers or taking a bath either. But American Heating can correct that by installing a brand new bathroom quickly and easily at a startling low price. Who can? American. Yes, American Heating's remodeling division can show you over 100 designs in famous Kohler bathrooms. And American Heating will do the complete job from floor to ceiling. That's including plastering, plumbing, electrical work, painting, floor and wall tile, windows, custom laminates, and even gold faucets. And for extra space, American Heating can install a powder room in an old closet or in part of a hallway or even under the steps. Now remember, at American Heating, there's no monthly payment for three months. So for a free estimate on a brand new bathroom, powder room, or any home improvement, call American Heating at 362-0800. Out of town, feel free to call Collect. This is Bill Steinbach. For an in-depth look at the news stories of the day, join the 90 to 6 News team this afternoon at 4.30 on KDKA Pittsburgh. Our pirate post-game show is brought to you in part by one of America's largest Chevrolet dealers, Barrel and Wexford, Little Profit Headquarters for Chevrolet and Honda, America's number one economy cars. Barrel, Rod 19 in Wexford. Once again, 
from Three Rivers Stadium. Lanny for Terry with you for our Pirate Post Game Show. Opening day, 1979. A lot of excitement. The uh, ball game went into extra innings. And then as uh, the game came to a close, Montreal picked up an unearned run in the 10th inning. The Expos won it 3-2. A couple of home runs. Gary Carter had one for Montreal. And uh, Ed Ott had a home run for the Bucks. And Ed Ott is with us on the post game show. A pirate catcher had two hits. Stole a home run in the 5th inning and then a single in the 7th. Ed, uh, first of all, uh, we were asking up here in the booth a little bit about Burt Blylevin. Uh, looked like he uh, was pitching well. How did he look out there? Well, Burt was throwing the ball very well. He made a lot of great pitches when he had to make them. In one inning, they got two runs off of him, and he got the ball up the whole inning. Gary Carter hit a fastball that was up a little bit, and then they got a couple base hits off the ball that was up. But all except that one inning, he threw a great ball game. I thought after Stennett made the fine plays in the fifth, Ed, uh, that we might escape with just one run. Uh, what about the pitch to Dawson that he got the base hit on? Well, Andre got the, he, Berg got the ball up again. I wanted the ball tight inside. He threw it about down the middle of the plate, and he got the base hit. Ed, what was it like uh, playing out there in the sunshine today? Well, <laughs> sunshine, that was about it. It was very cold. The wind was blowing, and the papers on the field had a lot to do with it because it uh, disturbed your vision as far as watching the pitcher and trying to pick up the ball bothered you a little bit, but it was chilly, but like everything else, both teams had to play in it. Players complain about any stings and uh, hitting balls today? No, they didn't complain about any stings. It was more or less like when they got the ball, the throws and everything as far as the infielders because their hands got too cold. They had a rough time feeling the ball. At your home runoff, Steve Rogers came on an 0-1 pitch. Right. Steve made just a little bit of a mistake with a changeup and got the ball up a little bit, and I got it up in that wind and carried over the fence for me. At this point, uh, a couple of hits today. Are, are you pleased uh, with where you are at the start of the season? Yes, I'm very pleased. I feel very comfortable the last two times up. The first time up, I was just a little bit tense, and I overswang a couple times and popped the ball up. But the last couple times up, I felt very good, and behind the plate, I felt very good. Okay. Ed, thanks for your incisive comments, and uh, appreciate you being on the show with us. Lanny, thank you very much. Ed on our guest on the postgame show, and we'll have more from Three Rivers Stadium. Tell you a little bit about today's ball game, and we'll check other scores down the scoreboard right after this timeout. So Custom Services. They clean draperies, they clean carpeting, they clean furniture, they clean everything. And when they're finished, it all looks like it hasn't looked in years. You'll notice the difference right away. That's how good they are. So if that furniture of yours needs that expert touch, if those draperies look like there's no hope, and if that carpeting is really dull, Brandy Custom Services can change it all. 682-5384. You won't believe it. What a job they do. Brandy Custom Services. For your carpets, draperies, and furniture, they're full service you can trust. It's Brandy Custom Services. They're a friend you can depend on. One other game this afternoon in Major League Baseball, and it's in the American League. The Chicago White Sox got two runs in the top of the second against Jim Palmer of the Baltimore Orioles. To take a 2 nothing lead, the Orioles came back with three in the bottom of the second against Chicago starter Ken Krevick, and Baltimore's added one more in the bottom of the fifth. So it's now the Orioles four and the White Sox two after five innings of play. The other game scheduled for this afternoon, Texas at Detroit canceled due to inclement weather, so still unable to get the, the uh, American League season underway in Detroit. Tonight in the American League, Minnesota's at Oakland, Dave Goltz against Rick Langford. California will be at Seattle, Nolan Ryan. 10-13 and 13 last year, Jim Fergosi's ball club against Seattle and their starting pitcher McLaughlin. National League tonight, the San Francisco Giants will take on the Cincinnati Reds in Game 2 of their series. The Giants beat the Reds, you recall, on Wednesday in the National League opener. Don Montefusco going for the Giants in the game tonight, and Tom Hume, 8-11 and 11 last year for the Reds, pitching tonight for Cincinnati. Philadelphia will be at St. Louis as the Eastern Division champion Phils open against the Cardinals in Bush Stadium. Steve Carlton, 16-13 and 13 last year against John Denny, 14-11 and 11 of a season ago. The Atlanta Braves will open in Houston. James Rodney Richard, an 18-game winner, will pitch for the Astros against the visiting Atlanta Braves. Phil Necro, a 19-game winner last year, will go for the Braves. And San Diego will be in Los Angeles. Randy Jones against Don Sutton. Jones, 13-14 and 14 last year. Don Sutton, 15 and 11. So that's how things look on the scoreboard this day. Here this afternoon at the Three Rivers Stadium, opening day, the Expos scored a run on the 10th inning to beat the Bucks 3-2. to two. We'll check the totals right after this message. You know, it's not too soon to start thinking about swimming pools above ground or in ground. 
At Valley Pools in North Versailles, the pool professionals can help you with everything from above-ground pools to fiberglass in-ground pool kits. If the price of gasoline goes up, a pool could be the answer to all your family's recreational needs this summer. There's a huge preseason sale going on now on Coleco above-ground pools. Or install your own pool with the latest fiberglass in-ground pool kit. They're the pool professionals. And to prove it, they've taken water chemistry courses to know everything about the water in your pool. Just bring the Valley Pool Specialist a sample of your dirty water, and they'll test it with their free computerized water analysis service. Learn about the BioGuard three-step program so you never have pool water problems again. Get out to see the Valley Pool's five display pools at preseason sale prices. Call 824-3030. Valley Pools, Route 30 and North for sales, 824-3030. Ball game this afternoon, Bert Blylevin and Steve Rogers were battling head-to-head, -head and the Expos got on the board first. The Expos had only uh, one hit through the first four innings against Blylevin, but then Gary Carter led off the top of the fifth with a solo home run over the wall in left field, Carter jumping on a Blylevin 2-1 pitch. Larry Parrish then singled. And after Spire and Rogers were retired on fine defensive plays by Ronnie Stennett, Andre Dawson delivered with a two-out single to left field. The uh, Dawson single driving home uh, Parrish and giving Montreal a 2-0 lead. Bottom of the fifth inning, Ed Ott got the Pirates on the board. 0-1 pitch. The Otter hit the home run to right center field and brought us back to within one. And then in the bottom of the eighth inning against uh, Steve Rogers, Phil Garner led off with a double, moved to third, and Mike Eastler had a ground ball to the right side. And then Omar Moreno beat out an infield single, a high bouncing ball up the middle. Spire went up behind the second base bag, but his throw to first was not in time to get the antelope. And the RBI single for Omar Moreno tied the game at 2-2. Then Montreal in the 10th inning against reliever Kent Tacovi. Andre Dawson reached on a hit batsman. He went to second base when Stargell was unable to hand over the Tacovi throw, and the error was charged on Stargell. But then after Tacovi got Scott to strike out and Cromarty to bounce out, Ellis Valentine had a ground ball. Dale Barra had trouble with it. The error was charged on the Pirate third baseman. Dawson scored, and that proved to be the winning run for Montreal. The Expos winning it by a score of 3-2. to two. Frank Tavares had a couple of hits for the Pirates today. He was 2-3. for three. Omar Moreno was 2-3 for three with a run batted in. He drove in that second run. Willie Stargell had two hits. Ed Ott, who was our guest on the postgame show, he had a couple of hits, including a home run and a single. Phil Garner had a double and a run score today. So that's how the Pirates looked offensively. Bert Blylevin, the starter, worked seven innings, gave up two runs. Enrique Romo worked one inning and did not give up a run. Tecalvi worked two innings. The run that Teak gave up was unearned. Three to two, Montreal over the Bucks, And that's the final score in the ballgame this afternoon. Looking at the score sheet, uh, that about uh, takes care of most of the notes here this afternoon. Uh, comment also that the umpire situation the uh, umpires today Dave Pallone who was the home plate umpire been in the International League last couple of years he recently signed to a National League contract and uh, a couple of other guys one guy from Rhode Island two people from the Pittsburgh area working uh, in place of the National League umpires who are still out 3-2 to two, the final score Montreal Expos taking the opening game of this weekend series opening day Three Rivers the final number is the Expos three runs five hits and one error the Bucks, two runs, ten hits, five errors. Elias Sosa, the winner, 1-0. Kent Sokovi, the loser, 0-1. There was no game-winning RBI. The attendance on opening day, 36,141. Some of our post-game pirates receive a $25 gift certificate from Chatham Sports Center, Pittsburgh's Department Store of Sports. And it's nice to have the folks from Chatham back with us, Gene Newfeld and company. And our thanks to Ed Ott for being with us today. Our thanks to Steve Greenberg for his assistance. Final score in 10 innings, Montreal 3 and the Pirates 2. This is Lanny for Terry, bidding you a very pleasant good afternoon on the Pirates Baseball Network.